Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Perfect timing. Okay. Good morning, Tere Hommikust. We are ready to start the third day of our Master Thesis Defense at the Academy of Architecture and Urban Studies in Tallinn University of Technology. Uh, welcome also our online audience. You are following a live stream from Tönis Mickey 14 Roof Studio where uh, 20 students of architecture are defending their master thesis. Today on Wednesday we will hear four presentations and uh, each one of them will last 20 minutes followed by 25 minutes of discussion and questions. And in the end of the day we will hear the decision of the thesis committee how did they do? We will now start with the first presentation. Uh, Jelena Kazak here is ready to start. Her supervisors are Francisco De Luca and co supervisor Professor Jenny Partanen. Jelena, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hello, dear committee, dear audience. Uh, my name is Jelena, and uh, I'm glad to present you my master thesis uh, topic Wind Analysis and Design of Urban Area Features and Layout for Improving Wind Comfort and Livability in Ulamista City. My supervisors are Francesco De Luca and Jenny Bartanen. Uh, to start with, I will uh, talk about the wind analysis in general. I will introduce you into the location of the studies. I will talk about my research part and the simulation process in particular. I will also show you the test shelters I did and then finally the design solution I came up with. So to start with, the beauty of the wind lies in the experiencing of the invisible. So uh, to understand how the wind appears, as the earth is not heated evenly, there are low pressure air uh, zones and then higher pressure air zones. And then the air tends to move from the higher pressure areas to the lower pressure areas, which causes the wind. In case of uh, built environment, in case of one building, uh, the on the windward facade, the wind reaches oh, sorry, the stagnation point approximately at the 70% uh, of the building height, and there, there is the maximum pressure. From there, the wind is deviated upwards, sidewards, and downwards. And uh, the downward flow is the most important in terms of uh, pedestrian wind comfort because it creates the vortex uh, in front of the building facade and also when this uh, standing vortex uh, stretches out, uh, it stretches out sideways and uh, it gets accelerated when it passes the building corners. So it is recommended not to place uh, building entrances or pedestrian paths near the corners of the high rise structures. And also if you are wanting to create a recreational area around high rise structure, you should pay more attention uh, to the wind comfort around the building. Uh, so around the 1960s, uh, from the aviation, the, uh, in the building structures also wind tunneling uh, was used and a lot of authors mentioned that uh, uh, pedestrian wind comfort around buildings is uh, very important. With the rise of computer technology, we understood that uh, we can use computers and uh, especially computational fluid dynamics to uh, simulate the wind, to understand how it works in case of uh, uh, building structure layout. And this was uh, part of my study that I did. Uh, wind study on a pedestrian level is co currently a developing area of study and I found two case studies which were kind of similar to mine. Uh, the first one was empirically testing uh, three different softwares and then evaluating which one was uh, better performing in simulation, in modeling, in results and so on. And the second one was uh, analyzing a building district uh, in Moscow and then placing uh, this kind of wind breaks to understand how they would improve the wind comfort in the area. In my case, uh, for the location, I chose Ulamista City. Uh, as you can see, uh, Ulamista City is located on a plateau and uh, from the south, there is an airport. From the southwest, there is a lake. So basically, when we look to the annual uh, wind uh, rows of Tallinn, the most frequent wind comes from south, 
and one of the strongest winds come from west. So from, the, from this area, nothing is actually mitigating the wind. Uh, in uh, Ulamista city area, together with the developers, we chose uh, four pedestrian areas, which are mostly used. And uh, the aim was to get different functions and also different sizes of the areas. So for now, I have a bigger park, a square, a smaller park, and a pedestrian street. And these dots also are marking the new developments I took into account in my simulations. So about the research part, my research questions were how much, how comfortable are the areas in terms of wind comfort, uh, which are the most problematic wind directions for each area, how to design wind shelters that would mitigate the wind, and then uh, how to implement into this uh, wind mitigating uh, comfort also the architectural part. Uh, so I started uh, with the simulation process. I developed a methodology and <clears throat> First, I uh, created annual wind analysis from 16 directions. From this, I defined the most critical direction for each area. Then I created more accurate wind, wind analysis uh, for each area. I defined the spaces which were uncomfortable, created a shelter design, and then I made simulations with the shelters to evaluate how the place uh, uh, got more comfort. Uh, so about the simulation parameters, when you deal with simulations, you have a lot of parameters to take into account. I was using two methods. Uh, first was a circular wind tunnel and then the rectangular wind tunnel. Uh, the first one uh, creates a condition where you can uh, uh, define 16 wind directions and then it calculates the wind velocities for these. And the second one is more accurate and considers only one wind direction. Uh, to be more pretty sure, then uh, uh, circular wind tunnel was uh, really big. You can see in this scheme uh, that I modeled the, not only Ulamista district, but the surrounding buildings also. And uh, for example, the radius was uh, three kilometers for this uh, simulation domain. And uh, from this, simulated wind velocities were used to calculate the wind factors and these were used to remap wind velocities from annual Tallinn weather data file. So as a result, I uh, got 16 of this kind of maps, which are showing the wind vectors, uh, uh, how the buildings are accelerating or uh, changing the wind vectors. And I also have this uh, 16 maps for each area of my studies. Uh, from this, I managed to define the most uh, critical direction for each area. Uh, for the three out of four areas, it was uh, south, and for the health center, it was south-southwest. So then I started to create more accurate wind analysis for each area. Uh, there was a rectangular wind tunnel, which actually has inner grid a lot smaller, so I could, like, more precisely uh, and uh, define the area of comfort for the pedestrians. Uh, the wind tunnel looks like this, and to evaluate the uh, area, I was using Lawson assessment criteria. It defines the wind speed, which is comfortable for a certain activity, considering maximum exceedance of 5% of the time. So for example, if we want to create area comfortable for seating, we have this, uh, we need to have uh, during 95% of the time, so the wind velocity does not exceed uh, four meters per second. And as a result, uh, here you can see that the, the blue area is comfortable for every activity, uh, then uh, green is comfortable for standing. So in case of Luitsa Park, I got a result that it is actually almost 100% uh, comfortable and uh, at this point, I decided to leave it out of my uh, design process. Also because uh, the area has a lot of trees and uh, already has a well-developed design solution. So at this point, I left it out. Uh, in case of Victor Palmi Square, it was one of the most uncomfortable areas. You can see that here, the seating 
and the bus stops are actually in the areas comfortable for standing or for walking. So I decided to redesign the space to uh, create more comfortable areas for the pedestrians. Uh, in case of health center area, I was analyzing the park, which is here. So the park was mostly in the comfortable area, but then I decided that I will also include this building would be a new development, it would be a high-rise uh, building, and uh, in front of it they wanted to place terraces, so I wanted to extend my research area uh, to create comfortable uh, space for pedestrians who would uh, spend time on these terraces. Uh, in case of uh, CPC pedestrian street, uh, the most uncomfortable area was uh, in the beginning of the swing corridor. These two buildings, this one is under construction right now, almost ready, uh, these two buildings are really high-rise structures and they're accelerating the wind in the area. So to understand how I could uh, mitigate the wind, I designed five types of shelters and uh, tested these in kind of open space uh, uh, conditions with three different uh, comfort levels and then I understood how big the area each shelter of comfort each shelter provides. So uh, this was the first one. It was inspired by uh, the protection of wines uh, from uh, uh, Lanzarote, Spain. They're uh, using the landscape to protect the plants. And this is the biggest type uh, I have. The second one was a permanent shelter. It was uh, inspired by the, uh, the past of the Ulemista city district when there was this Dvigatel factory and they were producing railways. So this one also has a canopy on it and uh, could be used as a bus stops with the uh, protection from the rain. The third one is actually just a half from the previous one, but it is used to protect the entrances in the building because I got as a feedback that the, on the Sepisa pedestrian street there, are, there is very windy and you even uh, struggle with opening the doors. Uh, the fourth type is operable shelter. It could be used for the terraces so it could be opened and then uh, closed when uh, people are not spending time there. And uh, fifth one is actually also interactive. Uh, this is a textile wall, so when you are currently spending time on the place, you can pull this textile out and then you are creating uh, a comfortable for wind space uh, for yourself. And uh, also in the case of uh, textile wall, it was the smallest type I used and uh, I got the area of protection of 10 square meters even in the most uncomfortable conditions, so it's a good result. Uh, then I started to uh, design the urban layout uh, for the areas. I didn't want to just place the shelters I already developed because they would seem like some kind of aliens uh, in the area. So I came up with a concept that uh, I would unite all these uh, three urban spaces and create a path for the pedestrians to understand these uh, uh, different urban uh, conditions in uh, different areas. And this was the final layout, as uh, these kind of uh, rounded structures did not fit well in Ulamista city, then I used this origami type of uh, sheltering. And uh, just to remind you, this is the wind comfort map of uh, Victor Palmi Square currently. And when I add the shelters, uh, it gains 40% uh, more uh, comfort than in previous situation. Uh, so you can see that also the area comfortable for standing and city and walking uh, reduces, which is actually good because uh, there's more uh, area comfortable for every activity. And the visualization, I also brought some smaller uh, human scaled structures in the area. Uh, in the case of health center, as I said, I extended the area here. And uh, uh, when I placed the shelters, the park was, was already comfortable. So my aim was not to prevent the wind uh, at all, uh, because here is a car road which I cannot actually block. So I was aiming to create uh, 
comfortable spaces for terraces for this uh, new building development. And in case of uh, Victor Palmi Square, you see that the comfort is not so uh, drastic, but uh, I reached my goal and the visualization of the park. So in case of Sepis pedestrian street, it was also a hard case because here is also a car road, which I cannot block. So I tried to prevent uh, uh, the acceleration of the wind to break the flow and also put some of these uh, smaller pavilions for the restaurants which are on the street uh, so they could uh, serve people and people would enjoy this uh, comfortable space. So this time the difference was uh, about uh, 20% and the uh, visualization. So uh, I reached uh, the conclusion, but just one uh, drawback. Uh, yesterday, I also tested this uh, model in the wind testing device. Uh, and as you can see, uh, this is this uh, uh, caused with the standing vortex. I have also a video to show you. Uh, yeah. So I was filming from above and you can also see this uh, uh, how the wind is blowing and also this upward flow which is <laughs> hitting me also. So yeah, as a result, I actually managed to create these uh, comfortable spaces in front of the shelters, even tested with this uh, wind testing device. Uh, so to conclude, uh, for three out of four areas, the most critical wind directions was from south. Uh, for the uh, health center, it was south-southwest. And uh, the most comfortable area was Lutza Park, so I decided to leave it out of the design process. And then uh, uh, health center improved by uh, 4%. The most uh, improvement we can see on the Victor Palmi Square, 40% uh, difference and uh, the 20% uh, difference in Sepisa Street. And also uh, one of my uh, uh, favorite goals was that uh, with this, even this smallest shelter type, which is interactable, I managed to create a difference uh, in this uh, area. So uh, also with the help of my supervisors, we submitted the uh, research for the ICADI 2022 conference and uh, got accepted. So this was my <laughs> personal yay. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> I use this one? Yes. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much for the very interesting presentation. Now we'll read the evaluation by Dr. Quismanen, uh, whose PhD is in uh, uh, wind analysis and wind comfort, uh, um, and he's an expert in the field. Um, the topic of the master thesis is interesting and demanding. The work of Yelena Kazak is well structured and contains theoretical approach as well as practical design to make the situation better in the urban areas chosen. <clears throat> She starts the work with wind analysis, correct. But the use of only one Voulier wind rose can be misleading. Uh, it would be better to use four roses, one for each season, as the same wind in winter can be felt as negative and in summer positive. Only one wind rose can be misleading also because it forgets the diurnal wind patterns. In an area so near Sommelacht, there is a daily sea breeze and land breeze system. Um, it might, be, it might be all right, but in our cold climates, I prefer using the lower Scandinavian criteria. Okay, uh, I have to apologize because um, to summarize a little bit, I, I, I forget to say one important thing. Uh, okay, uh, so before this, the author uses as wind comfort assessment uh, the criteria of Lawson. So it might be all right, but in our cold climate, I prefer using the lower Scandinavian criteria. Um, when we come to the analysis of the project area, grid streets and public spaces, her master thesis work is excellent. Design of the test shelters is, highly, is high quality architecture and windshields innovative. 
They show a deep understanding of open area design, urban place use, and people's behavior. The author has understanding of wind flow patterns and how to shape them. And last but not least, according to her simulating and my own experiments, the solutions proposed really work during south, southwest winds. Unfortunately, during sunny days, because of sea breeze, performance might be poorer. Uh, the list of references shows a common problem in universities today, the dominance of English language, mother lingua franca. Some very important Scandinavian sources are available only in uh, uh, Norwegian, Danish, Finnish, and or Swedish languages. Especially, there are some Scandinavian research reports recommended for further reading. This is uh, very interesting also for me. Uh, in spite of the importance of microclimate and especially winds on pedestrian level, this kind of understanding and Elena Kazak's know-how is rare in the field of architectural landscaping. So in spite of minor weaknesses in the analysis, as a whole, this is an excellent work. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, really interesting work, uh, but of course we have to ask you some questions. <laughs> um, so um, I wonder what, uh, why you choose these uh, system boundaries you, you, you have chosen in your work. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can explain a little about. Uh, you mean for the simulations? For the simulation, yeah, the system boundaries, like uh, uh, what were the... Uh, yes, okay. limits or limitations uh, also concerning the... Yes, as uh, uh, I had not, not much time for the presentation, <laughs> I didn't talk about this, but I can talk now. Uh, I was using uh, best uh, simulation guidelines for CFD simulations and uh, concerning the boundary conditions, there are some uh, uh, restrictions that are, for example, uh, uh, you can say by the building geometry, so when you build the structures around, then from this uh, uh, to the edge of the wind tunnel, it should be, for example, 15 meters uh, maximum height of the highest building in the area. So this is the conditions uh, for the size of uh, the circular wind tunnel. And in case of uh, rectangular wind tunnel, they're just a little bit different. Also, rectangular wind tunnel, as you can see on the scheme, it's uh, uh, considering only these uh, red buildings in the, into the simulation. And it uh, provides you with the possibility to create more accurate grid in the area. So yes, all the boundaries, for example, uh, uh, you can ask uh, what about the buildings that are not modeled. Mm -hmm. They're uh, defined with this uh, terrain roughness component and the uh, Z01, uh, which is one, defines that there is like a city environment around. There are different components, for example, if the sea is surrounding or if the structure is kind of like uh, uh, fields with uh, bigger farms and so on. So the components are different. I used uh, this one because there is a city environment and uh, it would be maybe interesting in case of uh, uh, the city as here is the airport, so not much city environment, but you cannot define uh, different terrain roughness from different directions in the simulation. So it was, I decided to use the one for every direction. So uh, another solution could have been kind of to include more parts of the city or to model kind of uh, a larger parts of the city? Mm. But, or I, or, uh, or uh, if, you, if, if not, why, why not? Uh, this is already enough, I think, because uh, as you can see, this small uh, uh, red squares are my areas. So I already uh, modeled enough according to this uh, best practice guidelines. Okay, uh, and uh, so I cannot read my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're writing Estonian. Yes, I'm writing Estonian. <laughs> 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 That's why I don't understand it. Uh, yeah, in uh, in general, which are the challenges kind of in this 
areas concerning uh, wind and turbulences. Uh, we learned yesterday in one of the presentations that uh, I think one building uh, per year is uh, newly erected in in in, uh, in Ulemiste city. Yes. And uh, what? How can? You, what is, in your opinion, uh, kind of uh, the reason for the problems uh, with the wind in this uh, specific area? Uh, my my case was that I was dealing with the problems they already have, like they already build the buildings and didn't consider this wind comfort. So what I would suggest that in the, during the planning process, actually the building uh, mass uh, kind of uh, uh, creates a lot of difference uh, in terms of wind comfort. For example, even in my case, I had this uh, uh, in case of health center area, you see here is almost uh, red. And uh, the building that I modeled was like uh, a brick, for, for example. And uh, when I tested further, I modeled the building uh, more uh, precisely in the masses and the upper mass was kind of rounded and it already created a lot better uh, situation in the area. So, so what would be, uh, in your opinion, kind of uh, reasonable for designing these areas, what could be kind of a solution for avoiding these uh, problems in future? When, they're <clears throat> when they would be planning the new building, maybe like from the scratch they could use this uh, building masses in the simulation process mm -hmm. and then uh, like uh, choose the one that creates the least discomfort for mm -hmm. pedestrians. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, last but not least. Uh, thank you. Thank you for a really, really interesting topic choice. Uh, I, I feel like it opened me a new world somehow <laughs> because I haven't had uh, really knowledge about the, this kind of simulation possibilities. And um, I've always thought or I've always like thought about it as we know the problem, we, know, uh, we, we know how it maybe historically have been solved, but there is not much to do as, uh, as planning the situation. Mm -hmm. But now I realized it's, it's like compulsory actually to make it. It, it so actually takes time. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I, I think if it's uh, developed a bit further, maybe it would be much simpler. I think. Yes, it is possible. For, I, in the end, maybe SketchUp will make a plug-in and we could do it like in three seconds or something. Probably it's not that easy, but still, <laughs> as the shadows they make. So, <laughs> um, uh, not in this life, yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I, I still, uh, uh, came up with a question, if you know a uh, city or uh, area or, or the developer, not in Estonia probably, but somewhere, who are dealing, uh, who are having this compulsory to model this and to develop the, the research before? Uh, yes, I don't remember the place correctly, but uh, I was seeing this uh, there were, were like kind of three structures with the canopy on top. And uh, there was also the narrow street with very high rise uh, structures. And as this uh, downward flow uh, mm -hmm. comes, then these canopies were protecting uh, from the, uh, okay. but I don't remember. So it was already designed. Yes, I, it was designed uh, especially in, in minding the wind comfort. Uh -huh, okay, because that I, I meant was if, uh, if it's considered before the planning. If oh, it's compulsory somewhere for the, for, from the municipality, for example, compulsory to analyze it beforehand. Uh, I think in the areas which are near the seas, maybe mm -hmm. in Denmark okay. somewhere, the, yeah. this is like one of the points you have to analyze. Okay. I, I, I believe. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for presentation. Uh, uh, I personally really like the, the topic. Uh, I've been always fascinated by it. So, um, 
I have two questions for you. Yes. So one would be actually, why did you choose? I understand that those are like more like a public areas in Ulamista City, but uh, I, and I also understand that the simulation that you did actually encompasses the whole Ulamista City area. Yes. And from personal experience, those like long corridors from uh, west to east have like really strong winds. Did your analysis also show that? And uh, considering that Ulamista City wants to be uh, kind of like a small, uh, uh, kind of livable city model, so also the the streets, the pedestrian streets, like the the, the, the regular grid is also Im as important as the parks. Mm -hmm. So, did did you consider also that, and uh, why why in the end you chose the, the, the areas that probably have like less wind speed? Uh, I was uh, choosing the areas in terms of uh, where people tend to spend time the most. So. Uh, I also have this uh, pedestrian street with, I also talked to Ulemista City developers and they kind of uh, suggested uh, uh, to use the places where people are spending time and uh, where they wanted to create some kind of outdoor office spaces also for the users. And uh, yeah, I know uh, that uh, the streets could be very windy, but uh, I couldn't like, uh, include all the areas into my study. So uh, finally I chose this four. Okay, and the second question uh, is about uh, actually vortexes. So like you explained that uh, the sharp corners create vortexes also uh, already Leonardo da Vinci was drawing like those are, th there are like really famous drawings from him where he was fascinated by different objects in, in the vortex, kind of like in the fluid mm -hmm. uh, yes. uh, areas and then kind of through the vortexes and the vortexes could be like really different like upwards and like, like in different directions. So like your design seems to kind of tackle the, um, the, the wind in terms of like, uh, what, what uh, yeah, exactly. How would, uh, or, if you design something, what kind of solutions would be great for, for those like vortex conditions that, uh, that, that happen have around the, yeah, the corners and near the corners? Mm. In this case, maybe it would be possible to install uh, like this textile wall type. It has two uh, structures and then you can pull the textile out. And uh, if you kind of uh, put these structures uh, around so you can uh, uh, pull the textile out from one side and then second side when the, uh, like, depending on which side the wind is coming. And also from this vortex is in case of one building, the downward flow is uh, creating this. So the canopies could kind of uh, prevent uh, the wind uh, which was blowing in, in, ca in case of high rise structures. But I guess the, like the the straight wind is more uncomfortable than the vortex in terms because the vortex has less speed, probably, no? Uh, yes, it's but it's like, uh, it, it still can be uncomfortable, uncomfortable. Okay. yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first question uh, about your uh, computational time. So there was, a, there was a question that maybe we can actually use this very easily, but what was the time of the simulation? How many hours did you spend, or your computer spent, uh, in order to calculate this? Uh, this uh, circular wind tunnel took actually three days. Yeah. And uh, this was also the case when I got some uh, results wrong, so I had to do it again. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, just to give the, give the general idea that this is not something that uh, we can do it in a, uh, in a snapshot. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, if we take a look at uh, what, uh, what you actually did, then um, maybe let's take a look at uh, Victor Palmi Square, the solution that you provided. Uh, actually, it was there already, I think. Oh, uh, the last one. Uh, not this. Go back uh, a few slides. And, and one more. That one, yes. Yes. So you can see that actually uh, you created with your uh, solution some uh, hotspots uh, near the building facade. Yes. Uh, uh, so can you describe why those happened? Uh, at this point, this was uh, like a process simulation. 
and I tried to put some kind of windbreaks uh, also in the between the structure. Uh, but then I saw that they are creating even uh, accelerating the speed. So in the final solution, I uh, got rid of those but I had not time to create a new simulation to actually understand how it would work without these uh, windbreaks in the street because uh, like only this is the, this one is the construction I left uh, for the design. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, that's uh, a little bit related with, um, with the discussion from the reviewer that uh, you actually now are tackling just one wind direction, but actually if you're doing something, in some other wind directions, you can worsen the uh, situation because this is just, you know, the equation of continuity, uh, the continuity equation. You can see that the, if the flow rate is constant and you're reducing the area, then the velocity will go up, and that is exactly exactly what is happening uh, near mm -hmm. the building. So, uh, in this sense, yes, it's always essential uh, with those simulations to have more than one wind direction to see whether this actually will uh, worsen uh, um, for the other scenarios, the mm -hmm, situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Uh, one thing I was just, uh, uh, I calculated the most uncomfortable for each area, so I was uh, at this point only considering the one because it was the one that was most uh, times occurring in each area. Mm -hmm. And then, then just as a last comment, if you uh, concluded that one simulation would take three hours, uh, three days, sorry, and uh, and then you will uh, have to do it multiple times because you will not have the correct uh, result as you wish uh, for the first time and so on, and then you will do for the multiple wind directions, then this is more than a master thesis uh, in the end, so uh, for sure. But thank you. Thank you. I continue from that perspective as, as well, because um, this is just uh, the, okay, one uh, wind direction, which is most, most common, I understood. Yes. But there are different four seasons in, uh, in Estonia. It's spring and winter and summer and autumn as well. So this, uh, the wind is not always the enemy. We should avoid. Sometimes it's our friend for a very hot summer day, so it should be help. To, for us to, to feel it uh, more, yeah, more comfortable. So I would like to see see some at least, yeah, f four like uh, the wind analysis for mm -hmm. it, these seasons. And just it's just a comment. But another thing is, um, what I wanted to hear. Did you you you, you brought some example of the facades? Uh, changing the wind uh, speed and um, behavior. Did you analyze how it would be work if you do some uh, and and cha changes in the facades of the surrounding buildings, adding some, I don't know, canopies, balconies, double facades, maybe even adding some uh, uh, floors on the top just for sim simulation, or the round some corners, not just make it sharp, rectangular. Maybe, maybe uh, you can comment, did you analyze that as well? Uh, the one thing I analyzed was this uh, test shelter, which was uh, against the wall, and uh, which was protecting the building entrances. It also had this uh, canopy on top, so this was uh, one thing when I interacted with the facades but it would be too difficult to analyze also the building masses, how they would change the uh, wind in the area. And uh, also in this, uh, the same case of uh, health center, uh, in, when I rounded uh, the building corners, like they were uh, designed by architects, I saw that this already uh, creates an impact. So this was like two points that I uh, interacted with the facades, but not more. I'm so glad to see this kind of presentation where there's so much research put into thesis project. And I think this is so essential that we, and we keep on forgetting that this is now the time to apply and make the research and apply it. Uh, because uh, like if we go to practice, it might, the research part might fade away uh, really fast, unfortunately. And, and I love the fact that there's, uh, there, there's this kind of new guidelines emerging for architects, landscape architects. And, um, 
and then also I think you might want to collaborate with yesterday's research project, the mm -hmm. first one that, uh, that actually is making those guidelines uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a master plan scale, so you can already guide like, how the public spaces should look like. But it reminded me the project uh, a lot of what uh, um, it reminded me the, the constant topic that I have in my practice, like is it form finding or form designing? And I think you, what you're doing and then using the simulation is really like for form finding. In the same way like Anton Gaudi, uh, like in early 20th century, hanging the sandbags on ropes in order to find the perfect arch, arch for uh, Sagrada Familia. And I think that uh, the way how you're approaching is, is really intelligent. Um, and now, since you get the perfect arch, or you're getting the perfect tune, I call them sand tunes, let's say, uh, now it's the, the question of design, like will the design come along? And I think when we start calling it a design project, we, we should insert all the other information that is actually like the design frames that we use in daily lives. Like where are the m most important moving axes? Mm -hmm. where, where people want to go? When? Uh, where are the attraction points? And, uh, and again, like I said before, like the shading or do we need to provide some shelter? Do we, how much seating places we need to provide? So I think it's... Um, I think it's an amazing input for for uh, for form finding and then also for for landscape architects how to uh, inform uh, what kind of um, point of departure they should have uh, in terms of designing it. And I hope you can uh, continue your research also in part like how we can now implement that as a design project how we can walk over them in order to create the access, not to cut away the access. If I want to walk diagonally mm -hmm. there, you can also provide this access. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's a, uh, there's a huge potential here. So thank you so much. Thank you. I just wanted to add to you, you did your, uh, your calculation, uh, your, your computation uh, with your private computer or kind of... Uh, uh, I had the opportunity to use uh, computers in uh, Dennis Maggie here also. Dennis Maggie. Yes, so yeah. I was using like four computers here and my own. <laughs> Did you check kind of also the possibility to y use a high performance computing center in uh, Taltec? I know that there is a possibility, but uh, I managed to use the ones uh -huh. that I had here. Because this could be quite kind of also interesting in terms of, uh, as you said, design process. Uh, we know it from car industry that they are using kind of these wind tunnels and using supercomputers uh, for constantly kind of evaluating kind of the design process uh, and, and as you said you need kind of three days for one simulation and then maybe it uh, doesn't work out and uh, with this uh, kind mm -hmm. of uh, use of, of, of supercomputers you can speed up the process and, and kind of uh, this can support this design process uh, quite a lot. But now uh, I think we talked uh, too much and uh, Francesco is... <laughs> This time I can add something? Or yes, of course. <laughs> I just wanted to add something in, um, let's say, to, to answer to the reviewer and also to the previous comment that obviously um, analyzing the wind coming from different direction during the different season and the frequency and the, spin, and the speed also would have been very important. But we have to think actually that this work was, was actually exclusively about um, uh, uh, let's say comfort uh, due to the mechanical action of the wind. Uh, so uh, so the, um, the direction were chosen according to uh, the most critical uh, uh, um, frequency during the year and, um, and wind speeds. Uh, but of course, because, because when then you start, you start to analyze wind for uh, um, when it is, let's say, more comfortable in summer, when you actually want a, at least a little breeze, and when you don't want it at all in winter, then you enter in, in, in the field of, uh, let's say, outdoor thermal comfort analysis that actually should take into account a lot of other factors. But of course, let's say a, a larger analysis would have been more interesting if there would have been the time. <laughs> now, the other thing I, I, w I would like to ask Yelena is, um, okay, quite general questions. I, I think um, uh, now that you, you've come to the end or to, um, to this uh, step of the work, uh, uh, what uh, you would do in a different way or what you would do next if you should continue this work? Hmm. 
what I was thinking that, uh, yes, I was analyzing the wind from one, the most critical direction, but it would be interesting to kind of understand which would be the second or the third uh, most uh, critical direction. And then, for example, in this case, if the wind blows from here, do they still provide the protection or how do they work? And uh, also, uh, as the comment from the reviewer was to kind of use different wind maps for summer and for winter, it would be interesting to know that how different uh, the most critical wind direction would be if I use only the winter time and only the summer time. So I think this would be interesting point to analyze. <laughs> and under the, let's say, uh, technical aspect, there are some limitations of your work. I mean, that could bias uh, somehow the results. I mean, because I think yes. you didn't mention. Yes, yes, uh, the simulation also uh, have, are not like 100% precise. So, Excuse me? Uh, the simulations are not 100% precise. So it's like uh, maybe like wind testing on the spot or something like this could be also done. Yeah, actually, I, I wanted to make you answer like about the trees. Ah, uh, yeah, the trees. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yes, uh, uh, the software I was using is not considering the trees, but uh, if you put the trees there, like the best wind mitigation you can actually get because they're partly uh, letting the wind come through and then partly mitigating the strongest uh, winds. But in my case, I did not consider these at all. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so I will uh, now uh, comment, evaluate uh, um, Yelena's um, um, work process. But actually, in my opinion, it is characterized by, let's say, different important aspects. Uh, the first aspect is uh, her, let's say, curiosity and willingness to learn, uh, willingness to learn a new topic and also uh, new methods of work, because actually, when you uh, learn how to um, design, that she did during all her career at university, um, you learn how to work in a certain method, but actually, research method can be uh, from uh, very different to completely different. So she was very, let's say, interested and demonstrated a significant interest in learning research method. And then the second aspect that actually um, surprised me, I can say I was impressed, is her uh, attitude in problem solving. O on one side, because, um, uh, let's say, developing research methods, sometimes you can use uh, the method already developed by other researchers, but other time you have to uh, follow a new path, you have to uh, find new method, uh, that it is actually something that she did during the work. And, um, and sometimes also this uh, problem solving, uh, we were talking about uh, before uh, she um, encountered a lot of technical problems in doing simulations. And actually, um, I was also impressed by another of her characteristic that actually is uh, perseverance. So actually she, she insisted a lot in, in trying to get actually the proper results from, from, the, uh, from, from the simulation and she succeeded. And then we had a very good collaboration in the sense that um, it was not a work like a supervisor and master student, but we worked like a team. And finally, I think she succeeded very well in integrating the research method and the design method. Let's say when I, uh, in the first place, thought of her, let's say, thesis, so when um, we started to talk about, I really thought that that work was, let's say, finishing, um, simply analyzing the shelters and um, um, analyzing the shelters as she showed uh, individually and then in the different urban environments and then uh, com comparing the shelters, which one was um, performing better in the different urban environments. But actually, she did what, uh, what is called uh, uh, the extra mile. So actually, she, um, she implemented the, the, the shelters in the in different urban features. So I think this is a very um, um, important characteristic of her work that actually she, uh, she did even, even more of what was expected. And um, yeah, so I'm very satisfied and um, I have already given the grade before. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank yes, uh, I would like to thank my supervisor
Francesco for helping me through the process. It was really interesting, uh, something new for me also. So thank you a lot. And uh, thanks to all my friends and family who supported me through the process. Thank you. Now we will have a five-minute break to change the uh, posters in here. Please use our noisy coffee machine to get some refreshment, and we'll be back in uh, five minutes. Yes. And uh, meanwhile, we are pinning up a new project and get prepared for the next presentation.
Right, uh, we will continue with the next master thesis, and the author of this thesis is Greta Annette Ojave. Her supervisor is Joannis Lukovas. Mina olen Greta Annette Ojave, ja minu magistri töö kannab pealkerja kodutuse vähendamine arhitektuuri abil Housing First Mudelil põhinev linnakvartal Tallinna näitel. Ja nagu juba mainitud sai, minu juhendaja on Joannis Lukovas. Kodutud või kodutust on rahvusvaheliselt defineeritud läbi eetaslait tipoloogia, mis siis jaotab mõiste kuueks kategooriaks. Küll aga tuleb mainida, et Eesti antud süsteem ei kasuta, ehk kui me ütleme, et aastal 2020. oktoobris elas Tallinnas 827 kodutud, siis tegelikuses vale definitsiooni tõttu on see probleem palju suurem ja neid isikuid on palju rohkem. Peale selle, et kodutus mõjutab riigisisaseid kulusid, jätab see ka sügavalt negatiivse jälje inimeste vaimsele ja füüsilisele tervisele. Ja seda põhjustab tihti ka stigmatiseerimine, mis siis tähendab häbimärgistamist, mida tihti süvendab väära aru saamade olemasolu ja siis negatiivsed stereotüübid. Ja siin kohal ongi oluline tõstatada mõte, et kui kodutute ja ülejäänud elanikonna vahel puudub suhtlus, siis on tugevalt mõjutatud viis, kuidas inimesed probleemi tajuvad. Ja võibolla mõnel tekib siin mõte, et aga ma ju näen need inimesi enda ümber, et mul on nendega pidevalt kontakt. Aga siin ongi oluline mõista, või teha vahet tänava kodutul ja reesotsialiseerujal. Tänava kodutu on siis isik, kes on tõenäoliselt juba aastaid elanud tänaval. Tal on tekinud sügav kontakt väliskeskonnaga ja tal on väga keeruline kohaneda siis sisekeskonnaga ja järgida karme sisekorra reegleid, mis on varjupaikades kehtestatud. Talle vastandub siis reesotsialiseeruja kes üritab oma elus teha muudatusi ja liikuda just kui sellest treppisüsteemis üles. Ja vaadata statistikat, siis tänava kodutuid on kodutute hulgas Eestis vaid 10% ja need on need, kui meie tavapäraselt näeme, ehk nemad moodustavadki kogu sellise negatiivse kuvandi, mis süvendavad seda stigmatiseerimist. Ja need reesotsialiseeruja ja reesotsialiseerujad jäävad just kui tagaplaanile, sest et nende keskused on viidud linnakeskmest eemale. Ja probleem Eestis on olnud aktuaalne juba peab 30 aastat alati, sest Nõukogude liidu lagunemisest, kui pärast mida Tallinna tänavatel elas tuhandeid kodutuid, kui aastani 2005, kui väeti vastu selline treppisüsteem, siis tähendab seda, et rehabilitatsioon toimub just kui aste ja astne haavalt ja seda premeeritakse siis võimaluse kõõpida varjupaigas, sotsiaalmajutusüksuses või ühiselamus. Ja täpselt samamoodi nagu seal treppist on võimalik liikud üles, on seal isegi veel lihtsam tulla alla, ehk siis see süsteem või see strateegia on ennast tõestanud, et hoiab inimesi kodutuse süsteemis. Ja sellele vastandubki siis Housing First, millas mina oma projektis keskendun ja sellist strateegiat kasutab näiteks Soome. Ja Soome põhjal on võimalik väga hästi juba näha, kuidas tänava kodutud arv on praktiliselt null ning aastaks 2027 on eesmärk kodutus täielikult kaotada. Ehk juba praktika tõestab, et antud strateegia on väga efektiivne. Ja Strategi koosneb siis neljast prinsiilist, esiteks eluase võimaldab iseseisvat elu, teiseks valiku austus, kolmandaks rehabilitatsioon ja jõustamine, neljandaks integratsioon kogukonda ja ühiskonda. Ja et mõista, kuidas selline strategia siis saab üldse majanduslikult toimida, võib seda kirjeldada sellise mitte tulundus ettevõtta nagu Vai Foundationi näol, kes siis tegutseb Soomes, kui omab väga väga rahvusvahelist visiooni, et teavitada ka inimesi väljaspool Soomet olukorrast ja antud strategia efektiivsusest, et tuleb esmalt pakkuda inimestele eluased, et nad saaksid tegutseda edasi 
rahulikult rehabilitatsiooni programmiga. Ja mida nad siis teevad on see, et nad teevad koostööd munitsipaal asutustega, kus saadakse siis osaline klientuur kodutute näol ja ja pakutakse neile see läheb elamispinda ja munitsipaal asutused siis tasuvad esimesel elamisperioodil üüri kulud ise, kuid kuna läbi arhitektuuri ja läbi tugiteenuste on antud väga efektiivne võimalus tagada hea rehabilitatsioon, siis see tõttu need inimesed ise seisuvad majanduslikult päris kiiresti, mis tõttu ongi vähendatud rahaline koormus munitsipaalasutustelt ning saadud tulu, mis siis Vai Foundation saab, see investeeritakse siis edasisse kinnisvara fondi ja saadaksegi järjest uusi elamispindu rajada. Ja vastavalt eelnevatele kategooriatele või prinsiipidele jaguneb siis toimiv Housing First mudel või see on linna kvartal kolmeks kategooriaks, milleks siis on esiteks elamispinnad, teisaks rehabilitatsioon ja tugiteenused ja kolmandaks kogukonda integreeriv keskkond. Ja vastavalt igale kategooriale sai siis valitud vastavalt kolm teemakohast juhtume uuringud, mida siis edasiselt analüüsiti ja leiti olulisemad märksõnad. Ja nüüd kui vaadata teoreetilise osa tulemusi, siis tegelikult ma tahaksin teile neid selgitada rohkem projekti osas, kuid esmalt ma mainin lihtsalt, mis need punktid siis endast täpselt kujutavad. Et esiteks asukoha valikul on väga oluline linnakeskne asukoht, mis siis lihtsustab tööleidmist ja uute kontaktide loomist ja lisaks siis nähtavus vähendab eelnevalt mainitud stigmatiseerimise probleemi. Teiseks konseptsioon, kogu linnakartel konseptsioon jagunab siis kaheksaks, esiteks avatus kogukonnale, teiseks painlik struktuur, siis fenomenoloogia, salutogeene disain, biofiil ja arhitektuuris, kodutunne, taaskasutus ja tänava kodutute kaasamine. Praegu mul on siin ajali miit, aga kui hiljem tekib teil küsimusi pärast projekti veel iga konseptsiooni kohta, siis ma hea meelega vastan. Ja ruumiprogrammist rääkides on oluline mõistad vastavalt statistikale on kodutute seas kodutute leibkondadest 10% lastega peresid ja 90% üksikisikud. Ja rehabilitatsiooni osas on oluline eristada kaudset ja otsest rehabilitatsiooni. Kaudne rehabilitatsioon, selle eesmärk on siis tegeleda inimese soktasenega, ehk siis sense of coherence, mis on otsaselt seotud ka stressitasene vähendamisega, mida siis võimaldatakseki läbi eelnevalt mainitud konseptsioonide integreerimise ja sobiva keskkonna loomise ja otsene rehabilitatsioon näeb juba ette võimalt väga konkreetselt siis arsti, psühholoogi, psühiatri abi. Aga antud magistritöös on lähtutud siis kõige algelisemast faasist otsasel rehabilitatsioonil ehk siis nõustamisest ja edasi suunamisest, sest et on oluline vältida kodukvartalis tervishoju asutuse tunnetuse rakendamist. Ja viimaseks ruumiprogrammis on avaliku sotsiaalse ruumi osas käsitletud nelja teemat. Esiteks segakasutus, mis tähendab seda, et on oluline integreerida oma vahel erinevaid funksioone, mis siis integreerib oma korda erinevaid inimesi. Teiseks tihedus, et erinevad funksioonid oleksid võimalikult tihedalt seotus. Kolmandaks loomulik järelvalve, et need funksioonid oleksid rajatud inimeste või eluhoonete lähedusse, et tagada selline loomulik järelvalve ja viimaseks siis läbilaskus, ehk ligipääsetavus avalikule ruumile. Ja oma projekt alaks olen valinud Tallinna kesklinna Storupilli asumis Paiknema Jakobsoni tänav 14, Kunderi tänav 15 kunagise Tallinna Pressbärmi Apriku kvartali. Ja vahepeal on seal veel tegutsenud päris mitmed erinevad funksioonid, kui tänaseks on jõudnud välja sinna, et seal tegutsevad siis väiksemad äripinnad, hostelid, parkimisala. Ja aastlamba ehitusoo on juba näinud aastaid selles potentsiaali ja teinud plaan, et seal võiks siis olla ka tulevikus kortermajad ja äripinnad. 
Ja Jakobsoni tänavalt vaadates illustreerib meid industriaalne paeglili fassaad. Ja kui vaadata seda olemasolevat sisehoovi, siis hetkel jääb see aalikusele just kui suletud paigaks. Ja uute hoonemahtude kujunemisel esimesel skeemil on kujutatud siis roosaga likvideeritavad objektid, mille hulka kuuluvad sellised väiksemahoolisemad halvasseisus, varemed hooneosad ja säilitavate objektide hulka kuulub siis kogu Jakobsoni tänava fassaad, mis on juba detailplaneeringus ette nähtud ning lisaks, mida ei ole küll ette nähtud, on see konsoriga paralleelne hoonestus, kuid kuna töö eesmärk on säilitada võimalikult palju, siis läks ka see säilitamisele ja lisaks veel korstna osa. Ja uute hoonemahtude suundude kujunemisel olen jälginud siis Kunderi tänava joone jätkamist ja teiseks siis olemas olevate hoonete asukoht ja suundi. Ja viimaseks siis on oluline, et kartal oleks võimalikult hästi ligipääsetav. Igas tänavast kas siis hoone sisaselt või väliselt. Ja siin on uued hoonemahud kujutatud skemaatiliselt. Nende hulka kuuluvad neli kortermaja, millest kolm on paiknevad siis olemas oleva paegivi kesta sees ja neljas on täiesti uus hoone. Siis seejärel kogukonnakeskus koos tugiteenustega, lisaks Zero Flat Konseptsiooni rakendav tänava kodutuid kaasav hoonausa ja siis kvartali sisesed väiksemad avalikud hooned. Ja et hooneid lihtsamalt kirjeldada ning tuua veid iga ajalugu tagasi olen nimetanud iga kvartermaja vastavalt ajaloolise Pärmivabriku algsete omanike eesnimedele. Eesmalt siis ongi siin kujutatud paraleeselt konsori tänavaga edelstiimaja, mis on siis jäetud kahe koruseliseks just see tõttu, et tema vastas olev konsori tänava kõrval asuv kuue koruseline hoone, et see ei hakkaks seda lõunapoosat kõige siis varjestama. Teiseks Teodori maja, millele lisandub neljas korrus, Eevaldimaja, millele lisandub kolmas korrus ja täiesti uus Karlimaja, mis siis vastavalt ümbritsevatele hoonetele on neljakoruseline. Ja kogukonna keskusel on järgitud siis kodutunde konseptsiooni ja jäädud kahe koruseliseks maapealsel tasandil ning lisandub siis üks maalune korrus. Ja Jakobsoni ja Kunderi tänava nurgal on siis rakendatud ennevalt mainitud Zero Flat konseptsiooni, mis siis kaasab tänava kodutuid ja kuna see antud nurk on poolenist just kui varemetes, siis oligi seda väga hästi võimalik ära kasutada sellise alana, mis loob, mille kaud on võimalik luua tänava kodututele selline keskkond, mis on väga tihedalt seotud sise- ja väliskeskkonnaga, et nad siis suudaksid harjuda uue ruumiga. Ja muidugi oli ka olulisel kohal profiilsed teoorijad, mille põhjal keskenduti siis hoovid rohelusele ja teiseks on loodud siis selline kahe tasandiline roheala, et esiteks esimene tasand kvartalis on mõeldud avalikuks rohealaks ja teisel korusel siis on juba pool privaatne mõeldud, mis siis ühendab kõik kogukonna keskust ja kvartermaju ja seal on siis kogukonna ajad. Ja siin on juba visuaal täiustatumalt kujutatud. Ja nüüd kui vaadata asendi plaani, siis ma kohe näitan teile ka suurendatult kõike osasid, aga tuleb esmalt mainida, et esimese koruse plaani Juures oli kõige olusem see, et see oleks võimalikult avatud kogukonnale, ehk siis seal on väga igas hooneosas on rakendatud ka siis äripindu või kogukonda integreerivaid ruume. Ja alustades ülevalt poolt on oluline märkida seda, et konsioli tänava poolel on kõrgus kaks meetrit madalamal kui kvartali sisesel alal mis tõttu sisenemi tänavasse toimub läbi treppi ja siis panduse. Ja kortermajade lahendustes 
on siis osaliselt kasutatud või rakendatud kortelmaja toimimiseks vajalike ruume ning teiselt siis äripindu. Ja liikudes allapoole tegib meil vaatepiltiga kogukõnva keskuse põhjablokk, kus siis on näha multifunktsionaalsed saali, mis vajadusel, mida vajadusel võimalik rakendada ka siis workshopideks või siis seinu liigutades luua täiesti avatud ruum erinevateks näitusteks, et see annab väga vaba valiku inimestele. Ja siis lõuna poolt kvartelise sisenedes on oluline koht rattaparkimisel, et tuleb arvestada, et need inimesed, kes peamiselt need inimesed, kes siin seal kvartalis võiksid elada, nendel ei ole suure tõenususega autot, et nad pigem liiklevad rattaga, ehk siis tuleb sellele tähele panu pöörata. Ja teise koruse plaanil on juba näha korterite lahendusi ja siis kogukonna keskuse teise koruse põhja blokis on siis kujutatud tugiteenused. Ja siin ka suumitult, et siin on siis tugiteenuste nõustamiskabinetid gruppiteraapia ja ligipääs arvutitele. Nii. Ja siin on nüüd täpsemalt välja toodud kaks põhilist moodulid, mida siis kasutasin enda kortermajade lahendusel. Et esimene on siis kõige uuemas Karlimaja kortermajas rakendatud ja rakendatud on seda ka Teodori ja Eevaldi majas välja arvatud siis rõduosa, mida takistas siis jäik paegivigest. Aga eesmärk oli kogu, kui ma nüüd lähen kõik siia, et kogu konstruktsioon oleks väga painlik, ehk skelett on moodustatud siis postide ja talade süsteemist kasutatud liimpuitu, vahela, et on CLT-st, ristkiht liimpuidust ja see läbi on siis võimalik kortereid oma vahel tulevikus ühendada ja laiendada. Ja siit on näha siis vaade kogukonna aiale Karlimaja koridorist, mis siis jällegi tugev ta profiilsete teooriate rakendamist. Ja siit on näha ühendust siis uue kortermaja ja kogukonna keskuse vahel. Ja visuaalselt siin on tehtud konde võimalik visuaal siis Jaakobsoni ja Kunderi tänava nurgalt ja esiplaanil ongi Zero Flati hoone osa, kus siis on näha seda varemetes hoonet, mida ma olen siis ära kasutanud välise sisekeskkonnad oma vaeseks sidumiseks. Ja siin on vaade hoovile ja kogukonna keskusele ja toimub see läbi siis kaudne rehabilitatsioon. Ja siin on ka vaade hoovile, kus siis taustal esimesel korrusel on kohvik tööala ja teisel korrusel kogukonnaed ja karliimaja. Ja tagatud on siis multifunktsionaalsed väljalad. Ja sellega on minu poolt kõik. Suure aitäh kuulemast! Thank you. Do we have a reviewer statement here? Can I read it from here? Yes, sure. Okay, good. So, <clears throat> hello, uh, Alvin uh, from Arhitek Must. So, uh, I will read the uh, opponent statement uh, that I wrote. So, Greta Annette Oyaves' thesis project focus, focuses on the successful housing first homelessness reduction strategy. The housing first model is seen in the thesis as an architectural issue based on which the location in the city center has been chosen, the space program has been erected, and the core value system for design has been set up. So the topic. Uh, the topic of the thesis is relevant, and the author is able to highlight it in the text. 
criticism of today's staircase system and the success of the alternative housing first is well illustrated by references to research papers and policies. It seems fully believable that housing first policy is relevant solution for ending homelessness in Estonia in the future. The topic deserves to be tested spatially and brought more into architecture. Uh, project development in research text. In the research part of the thesis, the topic is developed through case studies. A core value system is set up to shape both the planning and the architecture. So here are the terms of openness, flexibility, phenomenology, salutogenic design, biophilia, and so on. Uh, the author is fluent in the medium of dealing with the theory and builds text and project references to uh, solve the architecture that awaits the ground. The development of the theory and the references cover a wide range of concepts and provide architectural vocabulary even for dealing with a smaller project nuances. So for example, uh, reasons for designing courtyards and balconies are also uh, uh, dealt with. The research part might have had a longer transition between proposing the main topic and the topic development. I would have liked uh, to know more about existing housing first models in Nordic that have been referenced as very successful ones. The project references several times to Y Foundation's solution in Finland, but the research do not give answers on the spatial build-up of the Y Foundation. The case studies focus on quite different projects that are just partly uh, uh, overlapping with the project's theme. Therefore, based on the analysis presented in the text, it's not possible to know whether the design solution can be as successful as the referenced uh, Nordic success stories. So, uh, leap into the architecture. The leap into the planning level and architecture is smooth and seems accurate. The existing valuable buildings are preserved in the project and the volume has been solved in the context-sensitive manner. The goals for mixed use have been achieved. In addition to housing, the quarter has public and business functions. At first glance, it seemed to me that an inward-looking quarter could, could have been uh, made even more open to the neighborhood, but it comes understandable to, to the core values for design described in the text. So, for example, communication with the nature, nature in the courtyard, feeling at home. So this is the reason for quite closed quarter. I would like to acknowledge the interaction between the project and the theory separately. In essence, all the architectural choices are related to the theory and uh, case studies. And the arguments are clearly highlighted in the text. The project is highly developed, uh, and in addition to solving the thesis issue itself, it also deals with uh, recycling uh, dwellings and reacts to the concepts of circular economy. So I also have uh, two questions for the author. Uh, so I will read the first question, and then you can answer, yes. maybe. And, okay. OK. So the first question is, um, uh, I would like to know more about this uh, Y Foundation reference. Uh, how is this uh, building and apartment fund in Finland built up? Uh, does it only own uh, apartments or, uh, or does it own entire houses and quarters? So, um, or is this Y Foundation a partner organization involved in development or is it the developer itself? So it wasn't really clear in the text. So as it is several times referenced, so what kind of uh, thing yeah. it is. So Y Foundation is the developer of the Housing First uh, concepts and the principles and also the projects. So, uh, and also they have another company uh, who deals with the renting part, but both of them are a non-profit. So the, the Bulut, uh, income basically that they get uh, they invest it into further developments um, yes that's uh, how they work and uh, they only have at the moment uh, rental apartments and uh, today they have developed about 18,000 
departments. So they are very eclectic and mostly decentralized. And that's uh, one of the reasons why I didn't like, choose one specific project from there because there are so many different ones that I wanted to categorize them and uh, do the case studies uh, this way. Mm -hmm. So this nicely uh, leads to my next question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I also checked this reference and it seemed to me that it's not also uh, very systematic, uh, this why foundations um, kind of owning buildings or quarters. And, um, and can you also describe a little more about your choices in your thesis project. What is the reason for focusing on creating one quarter instead of a decentralized network-based solution that brings together individual apartments, parts of houses, support services under kind of umbrella organization? So you have chosen creating this quarter, mm -hmm. but yeah. could it be or, or why it's not a network? Yes, so actually I can come back to the first question on why foundation, how they work. Uh, basically, uh, they have a very wide variation of projects. Uh, for instance, they uh, do renovations of one uh, apartment in a whole building, or they might do reconstruction, or they uh, might have like a whole quarter. So what they do is they see the potential in a place and they use it. And that's why uh, I saw like potential in many of uh, city quarters in Tallinn that could be used uh, in a different way, uh, way and give more identity and that's one of the reasons uh, and another is that uh, in order to um, to explain the concepts uh, in the master thesis I wanted to have a wider um, uh, area for that to realize it. So that's why I chose a quarter, not a decentralized uh, one object. Uh, yeah. And it could be also a first kind of quarter and in the future there could be decentralized network yeah. of these quarters. Exactly. Mm. Uh, I hope that one day Estonia would uh, adapt this uh, system and maybe consider those uh, concepts and, and use maybe ideas for future uh, quarters or even like smaller objects and houses. And here comes the summary. Uh, so the typology proposed in the project is fresh and uh, discussion, discussion provoking. The project is professional and clear. The author has uh, excellent command on the art of linking project and the theory. Uh, the graphic presentation of the project is stylish and worth highlighting. In summary, it can be said that this is an excellent thesis, and according to the reviewer, the work deserves the uh, highest grade. <clears throat> Thank you for the uh, excellent presentation and the excellent layout of this, uh, your work. It's very clear and uh, understandable. Why I have um, just two short questions about this project. Uh, you compared it, uh, this uh, theme uh, with a system which, which is the, uh, existing in Estonia, like this steps rehabilitation. You, I understood that it's uh, not exactly the same system project. It's uh, outside of that st uh, staircase yes, project. Yes, uh, you mean that uh, staircase and housing first are different yes. systems? Yes, yes. Exactly. What? What? Uh, on what step you put your project on this staircase in Estonia? In what level? Uh, it's the highest level because if you look at the... Okay, sorry, I have to scroll back a little bit. <laughs> but in the beginning I had this uh, scheme of uh, how housing wor uh, first works here. So in the beginning there is homelessness and then what Housing First does is uh, prioritize the housing first. So this is the highest level and after that uh, a person can, uh, uh, can, be, uh, can deal with the rehabilitation process. Okay, and the sec second question is about this um, area. It's concentrated um, uh, quarter for these uh, homeless people. 
Mm, I didn't, mm, how, can you describe a little bit uh, about the security of this area, the security measures? Is there any kind of need for security, surveillance, oh. and such kind of things? Yeah, Thank that's you. why uh, in the community center I had this uh, second floor uh, meant for the support systems, and basically it works as a security system too for those people. But uh, I wouldn't look uh, if if you're thinking that uh, those people need like more security or just like the yeah, quarter the itself. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. But Do they need? Uh, I think it in a way it it works like a normal city quarter as well, that they do, do not need more security than any other. Uh, but uh, the social uh, social room works very well because uh, it's um, surrounded by um, living, uh, li housing, housing? Living? <laughs> so uh, as I said in uh, one of the concepts, it's a very important part uh, here that uh, the community area should be surrounded by uh, buildings where people live to give like more <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for the presentation and uh, I really appreciate it that um, there were a number of uh, references included, uh, references from different uh, types of housing uh, included uh, usually students have three, you had a lot more, and, and I like the conclusions that you draw from this research and uh, then try to uh, use it uh, in your design. Uh, I have a few technical questions. Uh, first, uh, why did you choose uh, CLT and, um, for the framing and, and for, the, for the flooring and basically for the, for the whole concept? Uh, the, the framing is mostly actually glue lamb. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So actually, yeah, I wanted to choose this uh, skeleton um, concept uh, that would give more flexibility to the apartments, and that's why I uh, I took into consideration two of the most popular ones, glue um, and um, and concrete, and I what um, lemma. Compared. Yeah, uh, I compared them um, uh, by the life cycle cost, which was smaller with the uh, glue lamb uh, construction, and also I looked at the um, part of um, uh, like the climate or circularity part, and mm -hmm. that's why I uh, found glue lamb more uh, a lot better than. Okay, and just to follow up from there. Um, if you are thinking about uh, floors uh, made of wood uh, entirely, um, have you any idea how thick they should be to have the same, let's say, impact noise level, for example, as compared to concrete? Mm, actually, yeah, I, I drew the, the, the section uh, in, uh, in, yeah, you can see it on the section, but uh, the, the CLT part of the flooring is around, I think, uh, 144 millimeters, mm -hmm. and uh, then comes the like, upper uh, uh, sections. And uh, I don't think it's it's uh, too uh, much uh, difference, or it doesn't uh, bother the the design. Because that's one of the reasons. Uh, what you should actually take in, into consideration when using wood that. Uh, uh, the noise levels are much higher mm. compared to concrete and then uh, how do you use this material uh, in the sense that the living environment is, uh, is uh, pleasable for all the all residents. Okay, thank you. I think it's an um, extremely interesting approach on, on or answer to a question, how will we live together? and uh, how we can integrate different um, different people on different steps uh, into uh, an, uh, a system, a social system that actually supports their development. 
And, and in that terms, I think that uh, the thorough research that you have uh, done and, um, and the different scales you have tackled the problem from living unit scale uh, to, to an urban scale and then creating a social system inside of the quarter and on the periphery of it, I think it's, um, it's really uh, working, uh, working in a way that it, uh, it, it, it has some applicability possibilities. But um, we have a current research going on in ECA and then the, it's, it's really dealing or trying to find ways how to make real estate developers to apply uh, a system like that, like how can we actually construct social houses that uh, that have a certain percentage or or all in all percentage uh, that are for renting uh, renting them out or actually giving them out for free for a certain time and then maybe after changing some kind of typology or adjusting it, it could become something else and um, and it reminded me one of the examples in um, in London, for example, uh, for a carbon tax in constructing a new building, and it's already applied the carbon taxes. Um, then, if you, for example, construct out of uh, if your carbon tax is low uh, or your carbon footprint, and you construct out of uh, timber, uh, you can get another additional floor. So your detail plan could be changed and it has certain flexibility to be higher than it was allowed before because you are constructing it out of the sustainable material. And I'm just wondering if we could, um, if we could introduce your system in that terms that maybe it can't be applied as a 100% a social house, but uh, what if it could have a certain method or if you could think up a method how a real estate developer, as you said, it's also owned by uh, currently by one. How uh, one could think of introducing those uh, floors or introducing certain areas, a certain percentage of the usable area, to to uh, for for that those means for social housing means. So I'm uh, I'm wondering if you if you have thought of uh, systems. Of in the, in the current scenario in Estonia, that uh, it could be brought into a game or or adjusted, but this question is really wide. This is something that I've um, been wondering a lot about, and I'm, I'm I'm just thinking like if going through this kind of a project or quarter scale, um, or or in this scale in terms of urban um, grid, if you have thought of uh, ways of. Uh, actually diluting it or scattering around the city with, with having a certain percentage on all the new developments in, uh, in, in the city. Uh. Like, is it, would it work if, it's not, if it wouldn't be in that shape? Meaning that would it work if it wouldn't have that concentration on, um, on those social, apartment, social housing apartments? Mm -hmm. uh, and rather if it would be scattered and having a certain percentage of all the new real estate development, meaning that can you introduce your unit or your system into bigger um, um, outside of this quarter? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it all, I think it all depends on uh, the organization that works with it. If it's profitable organization, then it doesn't work, I think so. Uh, just like I uh, told about the Y Foundation, it works very well because they're non-profit and uh, all of the money that they get, they invest it into uh, other uh, building uh, funds. So, yeah, that's, that's my idea at the moment. I think we should introduce a social housing tax in Estonia, if you don't make a rentable buildings, if it's only for uh, for gaining more more um, more value out of those units, I think that the city should push this kind of a tax and actually make it yeah. in all the buildings, so we could uh, dilute them or like uh, we could scatter them around the city, so they wouldn't be in one concentrated uh, place, but uh, more all over the place. Yeah, I'm even thinking that uh, the tax would be like not permanent because uh, this system works so well even in Finland they have like this 
uh, strategy that they want to get rid of homelessness uh, for the year of 2027. So with this system, we could ab absolutely do it. And that's why like the tax method could work for some time very well. And then after that, uh, I'm maybe too hopeful, but <laughs> yeah, the problem would be a lot smaller. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, yeah very nice discussion and I, uh, agree that I think it's in the responsibility of the society or the state uh, or the city to uh, take care of the weak. Uh, and uh, if you as you mentioned, the uh, London, uh, for mm -hmm. example, uh, example that is, uh, yeah, and and uh, yeah, if if the developers or real yeah real estate developers are kind of in responsibility, then they people are living in in crappy dark places which are kind of not rentable mm -hmm. elsewhere. Uh, so I think it's quite a good approach to have also in your design uh, kind of this uh, value that uh, it is in the city center or very close to the city center that is in a good location uh, that uh, the, the quality of space is high uh, and uh, I think that's necessary. Um, yeah, um, so I really like your project. So now I switch to completely uh, something different, mainly the, 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 the wooden construction. Uh, I can see your, your um, kind of um, uh, wooden support or, or, uh, or uh, column. Uh, how do you work, how do you deal with wood protection and kind of uh, water in the, in, the, in the base area? Yeah, how does I, this? Um, the main idea was to just uh, like, uh, cover it from the rain with the, the Cable roof, or yeah, the roof, uh, and also it can be um, like worked on with some kind of um, materials to like make it be protected by the weather. So uh, chemical uh, yeah, some kind protection. Of yeah. yeah. Or oh, there could be other ways, but else it's really a good project. It's just a detail. So yeah. I was just wondering because it's such a big picture. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. It was the I enjoyed uh, the presentation a lot because of the behind the work that you had behind it, uh, and the, um, the case studies and the conclusion from the case studies, as it also was told before. Um, uh, yeah, uh, at first. Uh, as sitting here, I, I wanted to see the problem. If if you have any problem in the in the design, <laughs> and that's um, it was tricky because you always answered in the next sentence already the the question that I I came up with, uh, but still um, uh, I wonder um, also uh, it was told before that uh, if you gather a lot of people with the problems in one place. Um, I think it can it can go two ways. It can go uh, worse, yeah. and it go, it can go be uh, better. Actually, I can say something. Yeah, that uh, the idea is that uh, there are not not only uh, homeless people there. Okay. Like when I talked about Y Foundation they have one part of their clients as homeless, so they integrate many different groups. Mm -hmm. But this quarter is just based on the housing first model. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's why I was thinking also that uh, this labilasque uh, was not transparent, but uh, the openness to the city, it's really important. That's how we can kind of uh, control the behavior inside somehow and um, yeah that's why I was looking from the sitemap if there are so many connections that could be could be okay I was a bit con, uh, concerned about this really narrow tunnels there I maybe I didn't get them right uh, the narrow <laughs> tunnels you mean I mean th this one no this one but I probably are they accesses or like this here? Or are these? Oh, uh, these are um, for the, the apartment building part for uh, 
uh, like the entrance of uh, the apartment building, okay. yeah, foyer, basically. Uh -huh. So it's in <laughs> indoors already? Indoors, yes. Okay. And the other question was about the fire, uh, fire prevention, mm -hmm. as, the, as the crowd is a bit problematic. <laughs> yes. And uh, I know that it's uh, permit, uh, permitted to build four-story buildings, but there are some kind of uh, norms that you should follow. I think there had mm -hmm. to be concrete floors. Like, you can have them CLT, mm -hmm. but it, on top of it, you need mm -hmm. to have a concrete problem. Yes. That was the question, actually, if you, if you learned about the fire, uh, yeah, fire one restrictions. One thing that I thought about the fire um, proofing is basically that uh, I want to use CLT walls for that because they actually work very well for, for uh, fire proofing too. So I can keep the uh, wood construction as much as mm -hmm. needed. Uh, thank you for presentation. Um, I I think it's, uh, considering the site that you chose, it's a pretty bold move to put a center like this in, in this area. Uh, I think it sh uh, shows your uh, kind of um, personal position as a young architect and uh, kind of like bravery to deal with this. Uh, for Fabian, maybe just so you also know that there's that the bigger building is a Hilton Hotel and also uh, to the northern side, there is a, a private development called Grand Gonsior, I think, and uh, there is like a new development also on the other side. So this area is becoming more and more uptight. Uh, I think there are more like um, kind of high income families and uh, and maybe just just some older uh, people uh, in this area. So I was also interested in this uh, Cartier versus uh, network question, but you. Uh, if, the stuff that the, the thing was kind of um, answered, but I'm wondering if uh, um, uh, maybe this Cartier should not be so um, clearly kind of um, um, uh, defined. Maybe the foundation could also buy uh, apartments in the in those new new developments nearby, or let's say if in future there's a similar area where this kind of center would be built. And you could have like this kind of cartier that's like a more gradual uh, cartier, because uh, there could be a clash of, of uh, this uptight contingent with uh, with with these kind of like uh, people who need help, and uh, maybe like there are some options like I don't know rent control or something that would make uh, uh, kind of this uh, uh, this area more uh, diverse, so that the clash would not be so strong. Yes, I actually believe that uh, in the future, if Estonia does set up this system, that they would choose this more decentralized uh, approach. But um, I just, in, in my uh, project, I just wanted to show all the concepts together. So, yeah, but I think it's, it's a very good point that probably uh, a more, more decentralized uh, solution works well. Thank you. Thank you. Now then, supervisor's word. Hi. Ah, should I come here? Or it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> uh, I, my typical broken uh, record speech every October, October, November to fifth year students is try to find the language now that you're doing your last year. And uh, not only aesthetic language, narrative language, something that defines it. In this case, not only did I not need it, and this is, has been like a Greta work from day one, <laughs> but I felt like some, sometimes it, it was almost like I'm bothering her if I'm trying to put her into a rail. <laughs> Actually, it was a lot of help from you too. <laughs> but yeah, but what I didn't know, I I'd say that for kind of superficial reasons, usually to students, for, like, for them to be ready to develop like a personal attitude to things. But what I didn't know, and f that's the first time that has happened in supervision, is I know that you have probably worked endlessly on that, but how much uh, time it saves. Like you have a lot of time in discussions to, uh, to talk about important things because mm -hmm. the basic things are on a rail already and going somewhere. And then you, at every week you don't need to go back to something, you're like just discussing. And that was very refreshingly 
Good. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Vaatasid on Eesti keeles oma viimased sõnad. Ma tahaksin väga tänada ka oma juhendajat Joannist ja I also want to thank the Commission and um, uh, Retsenseid suurete, <laughs> et läbi lugesite ja läbi teadsite minu töö ja ei saa mainimata jätta ka arhitekti ülopeili, kes oli mulle ka väga suureks toeks ja kindlasti ka kursuse kaaslasi. Aitäh! Thank you. We'll take again a quick coffee break to pin up the next project and then we'll continue.
it's time to continue. Next master thesis will be presented by Marta Volchek and her supervisor Liz Müller Ambos. I can start. Yes, please go ahead. So, hello everyone, and uh, my thesis uh, topic name uh, multifunctional entertainment hub based on digital gaming and Japanese pop culture. I'm Marta Volchek and my supervisor Müller Ambos. So, the gaming industry has become very popular in the last decades. The gaming technology has made a huge leap, but the existing spaces for gamers require attention and updating. Basically, right now, these are closed warehouse type premises. Uh, there are a large number of uh, gaming clubs, uh, internet cafes, uh, virtual spaces, and so on, but all of these uh, exist uh, separately. The problem is that there is no single merging point. As part of the project being developed, the game center uh, should solve the main tasks. Uh, creation of a spatial space um, for gaming tournaments due to the huge popularity of uh, eSport. Development of a functional layout taking into account uh, the constant development of gaming equipment. Room layout has to be designed for different types of games. Uh, the main concept of the project is uh, the design uh, of space focused on the digital games and uh, the pop culture industry. The main uh, question of my research is how architectural tool uh, can help bring the online community into real life by supporting their culture and presenting modern space and equipment. Uh, the modern problem is uh, loneliness and uh, stress, and uh, in order to change something, people run away to the games and find their communication and beauty. Now there is no age for computer games. Both children and adults play. Uh, games become a cultural phenomenon and are recognized as a work of art. Gaming is uh, growing in popularity. It's more than 2 and 5 billion players at the moment and is becoming a highly paid profession. The main group factors were the availability of the internet and the popularization of digital devices. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little um, about eSport because it's an important part of this industry. Uh, this uh, competition in the virtual space where players um, fight um, among themselves on an equal footing, now it's the fastest growing direction in the entertainment industry. Um, Esports is so popular and has a multi-million audience. It's more than 650 million people. Um, Esports is recognized as an uh, official sport in many countries and um, has, uh, has long been discussed within the framework of the Olympic Games program. Also, the esport market is huge, valued over than uh, 150 billion dollars. So uh, you can pay attention on the tables um, that show the statistics here, leading countries uh, in terms of eSport audience in 2019. Uh, and the second one uh, is um, growth of eSport market through the years. After that, I can add that the top countries in terms of popularity of video games are um, Asia, Asia Pacific region, China, Japan, and uh, South Korea. Therefore, um, I chose Japan uh, also because of its originality and uniqueness. And Japan uh, is the third largest video game market in the world. Japanese pop culture is unique and distinctive. Um, the forms of Japanese pop culture are very broad and include many forms of art. At the same time, it should be noted that youth culture dominates in the Japanese media. The Japanese um, produce games that occupy world rankings. Uh, particular attention in Japan is paid for arcade halls. They are always full with young and old people there. In Japan, it's like a cult. Uh, Japan is uh, very promising in games. Young people prefer console games more, but PC games are commonplace for everyone. Now I'm going to talk in about a couple of examples of entertainment complexes in Japan. One of them is Sega World, a whole network of uh, entertainment complexes with uh, various gaming installations, mostly arcades. Uh, Sega World is a good example of network 
networked uh, entertainment spaces. Uh, the next example, what uh, I really like, um, and it's a single entertainment complex, and this is the difference, for example, from Sega World. The Kawasaki Warehouse is a five-story entertainment facility. The concept is shocking uh, in its horror, meaning a uh, building from dystopian future. This entertainment center uh, offers a wide range of entertainment and addition to modern games Following its original concept, long-forgotten retro games and console installations are presented here. The Kawasaki Warehouse closed in November 2019 because it was uh, the dispute for the over the rent. And finally, the conclusion. Uh, the gaming industry is super popular for today and continues to attract a huge number of different people. The, lay the layout of the game center um, is multifaceted process that uh, must satisfy the wishes of each user. It's a very important thing uh, in advance about the development of technologies and implement flexible spatial solutions. Taking into account all analyzed factors such as market analysis, different uh, um, groups of users, the final architectural solution is formed uh, with a logical choice of terrain that will maintain the level of popularity in this environment. And finally, the project part. This is the render, uh, shows the presentative uh, part uh, from the main uh, entrance. <laughs> Location. Uh, the site of gaming complex is located in Tokyo, Shibuya district. The Shibuya area is a central area of the capital that can be called the heart and soul of Tokyo. It's impossible to miss it, especially if you love nightlife and trendy youth culture. There are many world-famous attractions, um, including the famous Shibuya crossing. The site plan um, is surrounded uh, by massive landmarks. Uh, at the top uh, is the huge Yogi Park. Um, the park is above the selected site, site uh, and uh, there are business centers and hotspots below the site. This is how a vertical is created. People move from the park to the urban jungle and back to balance the missing needs. Uh, the nearest building is Yogi National Gymnasium. With powerful landmarks and more uh, trending spots, the location is easily accessible. There are several bus stops around the construction site and it's only one and two kilometer from Shibuya station. Um, the concept was developed by a simple form. The idea is that in Japan, there are many narrow streets filled with uh, various bright posters and advertisements. Uh, this is um, a kind of branding in Japan. And I decided to implement this idea and create a visual passage through the game world, which is only inside. Outside the building is a deep and monumental stone, but inside is a bright and virtual world beloved by modern gamers. The concept is associated uh, with a gem in, in, uh, in the wild, which um, in itself is uh, ugly and rude, but um, in the cut it opens up to the world as something bright and beautiful. So, um, is my project a monumental outside look, but uh, in the cut it opens up with bright game world. Internal broken walls are represented in the project as screen walls. Uh, these are uh, transparent land panels through which the image is broadcast. Uh, this was create the main concept of the project as a complete immersion in the virtual universe. The facade is divided into many triangle uh, panels. Each triangle supports several faces, alternately um, oriented in different directions. These large triangular models are made of glass and uh, regularly spaced LED models, forming a large animated grid. Uh, these panels can function independently, each displaying a different image, or the panels can work together to display the same image on all LEDs. Uh, the multifunctional gaming complex consists of um, five main parts. 
divided by functionality, gaming center, uh, sorry, here, training center, hostel, uh, competitive area, and parking lot. Uh, thanks to the conceptual division uh, on the ground part, one volume was divided into three parts. Those three separate buildings appeared and their proper functionality took their place. It's important for me to show you uh, these two plans side by side because uh, the main uh, connection is uh, between the gaming center and the arena. Mm, they are connected by a large staircase here. And this one, mm. uh, and this is only for visitors in gaming center. Uh, ground floor for gaming center, it's open uh, gallery hall, reception, cafeteria area. For a hostel, the same function with open hall and dining room. But for the training center, it's more close. It's only for professional gamers and uh, for people who stay in hostel. Um, on minus, uh, minus ground floor, uh, there is a, a first level of underground parking with evacuation stairs and elevators that will take you to the desired building. You can get directly to the arena form, uh, from parking lot. You must uh, first get to the center and only from there get to the arena. Uh, minus second floor, uh, second level of parking, and that's all with the parking. And minus third floor, there is a stage and technical room for ventilation under the seats. Also room for equipment, uh, two elevators, uh, those, um, two elevators uh, on the right take uh, competitors and center staff directly to the stage from the training center. In fact, this is the bottom of arena. Uh, this is a render of the arena. Uh, and th what? I'm sorry. <laughs> this, is <laughs> this is a render of the arena and <laughs> the seats are uh, clearly visible here as well as the stage um, on which two teams um, are most often divided. Uh, on screen, um, well, for broadcasting one team, for example, uh, second uh, for other team and join uh, together. Um, this uh, visualization is more conceptual, showing how the light uh, in the arena can play and just the beautiful sitting and camera arrangement. Uh, ground floor again uh, to show you the other uh, ground floors. So uh, the second floor uh, for gaming centers full uh, with arcades and uh, uh, some kind of lounge with bar. For hostel, this is the first level of uh, rooms with, uh, I don't know, like two levels beds like in the hostels usually use. And in the hostel, uh, the hostel is connected with the horizontal pass with a gaming center and training center like uh, additional uh, evacuation exits. For training center, this is a uh, working space area, mostly uh, hot desking here, uh, close uh, working area, uh, gaming classroom, conference and uh, content studio. Uh, the third floor, uh, for gaming center full with uh, PC stations and uh, uh, podcast room uh, for hostel the same function uh, at it, as it was. And for training center, this is more like practicing uh, racing simulators with showers, um, uh, open training area, the room for uh, teams five plus five, uh, server room and lounge. And uh, the last floor um, for gaming center more fun functional with VR uh, space, uh, mobile, 
mobile gaming, console gaming here, lounge with the bar. And for the hostel, this is the more private rooms for a single or for a couple, for example. So the sections. Um, section one, uh, the structure of the building is mostly reinforced concrete walls and columns with a concrete uh, slab floor system or occasional one-way joist concrete slab floor. The training center uh, and the hostel have a um, HVAC system under the roof on the technical attic uh, room. Mm. Uh, section two shows arena roof system. Um, this uh, with steel space frame structure, which uh, from the west side is supported by a perpendicular two meter high reinforced concrete beam. Um, the HVAC system for the arena is located in a room under the seats and uh, works both for arena, parking lot, and uh, for the gaming center here. Uh, the curtain wall system with transparent LED is supported by roof, wall, and uh, floor slab connection. Uh, the exterior finish is made of raw bare concrete panels, uh, hinged um, transparent LED walls turn um, the building into futurism. External lighting on the facade is contour lighting, um, additional panels with LEDs. Uh, the interior is uh, mainly decorated with uh, concrete walls covered with uh, decorative panels. Also special acoustic decorative panels are integrated into the right rooms to avoid acoustic problems. Mm, the render shows that um, such uh, lighting helps to highlight the building from the background of the other structures uh, in order to attract the attention of visitors. And outside uh, at the main entrance, mm, there are green lawns as well as an exhibition area. There are presentable statues in the style of Japanese pop culture uh, and introduce visitors from the main entrance. Um, about energy efficiency and sustainability. I recognize uh, that my building would require a huge uh, amount of electricity because of lots of computers. However, um, these are the ways how it's possible to reduce uh, consumption. And then uh, excess heat from equipment can be reused during winter where insulation equipped uh, with the heat exchanger. Uh, use um, of automatic light sources uh, heating control with thermostats. The transparent LED walls used in the project help illuminate uh, the building both outside and inside. And uh, an extremely compact building with limited window area, which is also uh, partly um, shaded by transparent LED strips, is mostly protected from the sun by a narrow inner street. Mm and uh, an open interior layout uh, allows a building to be multifunctional by its uh, flexibility, but only for use by gaming space. And uh, that's all. And yeah, here you can see the ramp for uh, underground parking more clearly. <laughs> Thank you, Marta. Next, yes. we will hear the review by architect Tomo Mihayash. Yeah, good morning. Uh, yeah, thank you for interesting work. Um, actually, very honored to review the work done to my home country where I'm from and the way I grew, grew up for, no, yeah, some years. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, I think uh, mm, that, 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 uh, mm, um, I think uh, uh, the quality of work and the relevance of uh, the chosen theme 
Uh, I think uh, you understood that uh, uh, this is well chosen and uh, well presented uh, to certain degrees. But uh, um, as, as she has written in the text, uh, that, uh, the, the theoretical part that uh, this uh, the industry is growing and uh, the, uh, the money is accumulated and the people are getting onto that, uh, the movement and trend and stuff, uh, that's for sure that uh, I think we have no doubt about it. But uh, um, uh, and also the, the, that uh, she has pointed out that uh, the problem of the pro uh, problem of modernity is loneliness. Many people suffer from depression and over exertion. To get rid of this, people are immersed in the game world. Many find communication and beauty there. And uh, no, she she touches upon this kind of a social uh, observation and why this is important, then, then I get into a dilemma that uh, uh, this part uh, of this uh, social description and stuff, uh, this was not so much uh, written in the text part. This was uh, one of the shortest chapter, which uh, I could have waited more to, to deeper analysis and uh, maybe some kind of uh, input into the few, this, uh, this project uh, development. Uh, which which is uh, crystallized in this way. Um, no, for example, uh, in, uh, no, maybe not not only in Japan, but uh, there are people um, uh, stay in the house and uh, get connected through the internet and stuff, and uh, and uh, people are uh, spending more time um, and the money to what they like, but a uh, little bit. Uh, uh, is integrated from the rest of the society. I think uh, the, the known terminology can be otaku or hikikomori, and uh, such a stuff uh, unfortunately not mentioned. Um, so uh, I miss that, that that would have implemented better into your work. And then uh, mm, uh, I think this. Uh, um, no, she brings out the advantage of gaming, and in that sense, uh, she could have touched the, the basic uh, uh, um, understanding of human nature, that, that the gaming is promoting people to uh, do and uh, do cleverly and um, find uh, alternatives. So in that sense, uh, this uh, gaming is part of the human nature in learning process. This could. Uh, could have been mentioned, and then, uh, mm, and then, uh, then, uh, mm, so then we we take a look at this uh, project part. That uh, uh, um, no, this is very effective, and I enjoy the, the rendering and uh, and stuff. But the uh, um, the part I miss the most is this uh, connection with the surroundings. Uh, this building is uh, designed introverted way, and the surrounding by the heavy concrete wall, and uh, actually not uh, shown in the, the model, and also in this rendering of this uh, title page. But uh, there is a uh, this uh, monumental um, uh, Yoyogi gymnastic hall designed by Kenzo Tange which is, you know, to me, the, the gem of this uh, modernist uh, architecture, which is not uh, shown. And, and also, she could have actually um, make a connection, some kind of reference, or um, you know, something like that, to the project. And then, actually, in this site, there is already demolished, but th there has been another Kenzo Tanget building. Uh, and. Uh, so in that sense, that uh, this, height, this site has very uh, important meaning for the rest of the Yoyogi Park, uh, which is uh, very, very well visited by the locals and by the tourists. And uh, so, so this part I, I miss the most. That uh, um, how was that? How was that, uh, uh, the site chosen? For what reason? And uh, uh, how she has formed this kind of uh, uh, statement that the, the project I is... I can try to explain okay. now about how I chose. 
Okay. Uh, uh, because uh, choosing uh, allocation was a difficult task for me uh, since my only option uh, for finding a place where walking on Google Maps and uh, looking for a suitable place. Like mm -hmm. I had uh, several options um, that were more close than distant, but uh, I saw my project as a kind of monument of gaming um, world. Um, therefore, um, when I found uh, a place near Yogi Park, I chose this one. Uh, this location connects a huge park, uh, as you said, and uh, popular spaces um, in the Shibuya district. And I decided that my project could be a good uh, additional to this area. Uh, if uh, there is a lack of greenery, people will go to the park, which is located across the route. If a person wants to take a break from playing activities, he will go to the Shibuya area, which is full of various types of other entertainment. So yeah. it, it was just a very uh, difficult uh, challenge for me to find a good place uh, just walking in Google Maps. And uh, I had many uh, options, but uh, I was maybe a bit in love with this place because it's open and uh, massive. Mm -hmm. And I, I decided to create my project uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I think that that's what, what I thought, how, how that choice. I will uh, go to, to Japan, like when yeah. it will open yeah. <laughs> to see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, maybe the last part. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the uh, uh, second part of the question is uh, how this uh, internal organization of the rooms were decided and also um, how, um, mm, how, the, uh, the, how to say this, uh, how the programs were uh, chosen and yeah. how it can be justified. Mm -hmm. Because uh, your reference project uh, was shown without any plans or something. <laughs> like so, references. So that's why I was wondering yeah, where I know. Did, have you decided uh, I was searching for many, many places, uh, but uh, they are always like separately. It's mostly like arcades hall or uh, arenas for esports. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, I do the program by myself. So uh, I just combine everything uh, mm -hmm. I, I found in my uh, project. So uh, this is maybe because I didn't put uh, in the portfolio uh, some references I mm -hmm. because it was very much, very mm -hmm, mm -hmm. too many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or maybe um, I think I should wrap up my part. But uh, um, yeah, that uh, uh, I think uh, somehow I, I sense. Uh, background in the background of the project that uh, this reflects uh, uh, what kind of time we have uh, lived in the past uh, two, two years or something due to this uh, corona virus and stuff that uh, we could not access to the, the place we couldn't go and uh, only source is uh, only source we can find is through uh, the internet and uh, and, and also this uh, ren and also this uh, rendering shows that uh, uh, this uh, in the in the evening. I wonder that uh, how it is in the daytime and uh, how it is, uh, uh, yeah, how 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 it is um, really sitting in this uh, in this spot. That uh, mm, no, in that sense that uh, yeah. As a practicing an architect, I have uh, many questions: <laughs> how the <laughs> plans are, and the structures, and the materials, and the uh, stuff, and on and on. But uh, I think uh, in th in this given context, and also this uh, uh, the her uh, or your uh, uh, this uh, eager to to tackle on this issue, that uh, um, I think it's well done in that sense. That the, yeah, but uh, many questions are still. <laughs> but I say I I I, I enjoy the uh, reviewing the project. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> <coughs> 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 <coughs>
Um, thank you for the very in interesting uh, presentation to the game world and uh, in look to the Japan once again, once very, very nice. Can you say a bit louder? Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, there is uh, different uh, things and different dilemmas for me. It's uh, put all First of all, this is a location. It's a very beautiful location. It's a simple building, of course, very nice. But there is no connection, not visual, uh, from the building. It's a standalone object. And it's uh, more like a casino. It's, uh, if you are walking in a park, you go inside and never go out again. Because you can live there, you can play there, you can yes, train yes. there, you have no... No relaxing at all. Even I noticed that there is uh, there, though there is a hostel, there is no windows. There is uh, the rooms opening to the canyon through these screens. I don't know. Is definitely these screens are uh, open into the rooms as well because yeah. it's, it's gaming center. It's all day long and night time. There are screens as windows. Yes, I can explain, uh, for example, for the centers. One second. Uh, yes, I agree, but um, in the inside the walls uh, they're uh, more like shaded it's not so bright light like outside uh, that's how the panels uh, works for the hostel for example um, in the be bedrooms um, it's um, the hostel function is designed like uh, only for the sleep uh, and uh, when uh, I came up uh, with the concept uh, of LED panels, I decided that thick black curtains would be used in the bedrooms to limit uh, light from the LEDs to uh, that people can sleep there. Uh, but uh, inside the um, uh, centers, it's not so problematic because uh, the panels are very popular now and uh, they uh, use uh, more and more everywhere. Like. Uh, I saw one project, uh, it was a uh, hotel, uh, and uh, they use the same um, transparent uh, lead walls near the bedrooms. It's not so so bright inside. Don't you think that 24 hours of looking at the screens might uh, affect your uh, a, uh, health? Um, I put the rooms like with the re uh, without the windows, uh, the rooms say that they don't need uh, some uh, some light, and uh, the rooms um, uh, they like uh, lounge or uh, or some kind of uh, working areas, or workshop near the lead uh, walls that uh, they get uh, the light of uh, walls. This, this was my concept, uh, and uh, I know just that inside the light uh, is not so um, uh, like uh, without a bad effect on, on the people's uh, statement. So, so basically, this uh, buildings could be like in uh, harbor, in port, in airport, in everywhere else as well, because there is no uh, connections from inside to outside world. So it means that if you are inside, so you are inside, and you don't never look out again. Can you explain your question a bit better? It's... Um, um, if it's um, located in such a beautiful uh, park and uh, there is even in the lobby or even this in uh, recreation areas, there is no way to rest of this gaming world. Yeah, 
Uh, I agree here only the launch uh, spaces, but uh, everyone uh, feels uh, tired of game activity. And uh, as I said, uh, if you're tired, you can go to the park across the route. So yes, my complex was planned only for uh, like uh, the gaming activities. And if you want to go to, to take a rest, you can go to sleep or uh, take some rest uh, in open hall uh, spaces. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you for an interesting uh, presentation. And um, I'll continue from there that uh, I actually Googled this area uh, meanwhile. And, uh, and this is a sp sporting center, let's say. There yeah, are basketball courts, not, not that one, but the, 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 the area <laughs> that you, have, you are building your center in. Basketball courts, uh, uh, swimming, indoor swimming facilities, and so on. Yeah. And now you are putting your e-sports center to the same uh, area. So how do you philosophically think that uh, whether there is a conflict that you are drawing those kids away from real active sports and putting them to this arena, sitting down for 24-7? Or there is no uh. conflict on that? For me, it's, um, as I said, for example, um, this uh, uh, e-sport audience, it's very uh, high now. And uh, for example, the e-sport has long been discussed uh, within the framework of Olympic Games, and this is the uh, official sport uh, in many countries. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I thought, uh, I decided to, to put my um, project here uh, just because the f functional you talked about too. This is the part of sport, I think. This is my opinion. But then, uh, like, philosophically, it's totally different sport. Uh, the, the sports we are talking in this area are uh, improving your physically. Now, the center probably will not improve you physically, maybe mentally, but as, as we already uh, uh, discussed, maybe it will actually decrease your mental activities or uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's not favorable for, uh, for you. So in this sense, do you see uh, that this place is the correct one for an eSports center? Uh, yeah, I see. Uh, what, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, it's a point of view. If, if, if that's your answer, then I'm fine with it. Uh, uh, okay, and another question is a little bit more technical, and uh, you, you were talking a little bit about um, heating and ventilation and, uh, and uh, energy consumption and so on, but I think one, one thing was left out of it, and that's actually cooling because uh, he heating and ventilation is not the same as cooling, and uh, you have a lot of servers, you have no windows, so, so a lot of uh, lights and, and so on, which are 24-7 working. You have Tokyo with a degree, high yeah. degrees uh, in the summertime and so on. So have you actually given some thoughts as how this cooling will be uh, you know, designed in this building? Uh, I have to... Uh system of H, um, HVAC, so it's um, uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, and uh, the cooling systems as well there on the roofs, uh, as on the roofs here on the gaming center and in the hostel the same, and for the gaming center and uh, parking lot, sorry. Uh, and um, and arena, of course, they're uh, under the seats, and uh, they are connected with uh, pipes. pipes, pipes, uh, through whole of the building. Okay, this is uh, yeah, the, basically the location of it. But uh, have you thought that what kind of technical solution are you going to use, whether this is sustainable or to those, to those motors to do the job or? Uh, about cooling, I was thinking that I can use the uh, conditioners, but uh, 
I think I, I can't answer your question. <laughs> uh, like, uh, yeah, and, and that's totally fine, but yeah, just <laughs> something in such building with such an energy consumption, I think this is something that t you should definitely consider. You have a indoor swimming pool just across uh, the street. Maybe yeah. you can use <laughs> those two by heating this water in this indoor swimming pool mm -hmm. if it's needed and so on. So just think out of the box. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think you have totally th thought out of the box and have had a lot of fun developing this project because it seems like you're really into it and you're believing it truly. <laughs> and, uh, and I think it's a right place to still have some fun, you know, before you become a professional. <laughs> and and I, I also appreciate the fact that you have uh, built up your own brief because um, some projects we have seen here are, they depart from the competition brief or given brief. And in your case, you're actually developing the, the brief itself. Uh, so there's two topics uh, I want to discuss. And um, I would start with um, the apologies that reinforce its functions. Uh, I think in like, uh, for example, museums, uh, they uh, they used to be, or like if this kind of typologies that are emerging, uh, they were like old mansions or castles or buildings taken over and uh, and created uh, or becoming the museums or or let's say art art halls uh, to represent uh, art. So it was all about like having different rooms and then, then the continuity be between the rooms. And then became the design museums, you know, like. Bilbao, the Guggenheim, Maxi, they were all trying to find a new typology on how to perceive art or how to look at uh, objects. And now you talked about the gaming, yeah? And then there's like the gaming hub. And you said that the current typology of it is usually a old warehouse uh, and, and something that uh, uh, something that, or, or sort of taken over spaces, uh, arcades or something like that. And, and now I'm wondering if, uh, what have you created? Did you just cut open a warehouse? Or, or did you really try to find new ways or new spatial qualities that those warehouses are not really carrying in them and you are giving them something now that is, uh, advancing or bettering the problems that you mentioned also in your first chapter, the, the, the social issues and, uh, and the fact that they, they have no break and how to reinforce of like uh, spare time and, and the gaming time. So I'm, I, I, I sort of kept on thinking like if, if that's the first step on, on finding this typology that actually would support and solve your issues I'm also wondering if there are actually already existing leftover typologies that we should take over. For example, old cinemas, you know, in Estonia we have like, I mean, I think it's everywhere, like no one needs to go to cinema anymore. Uh, so we can, you can take over those uh, if you need a big arena space mm -hmm. or, or post offices, like, I mean, no one constructs post offices anymore. And then there's like plenty that we would uh, produce something else. So I'm, I'm wondering, like, do you think that or oh, did you ever consider uh, putting your program into existing sort of a leftover typology that would just put it into another quality and then actually would deal with the problems? Or it was pretty clear from the beginning on that it, it needs to be from the ground zero. Uh, you start from the beginning and, and construct it your own because, uh, because this typology needs a really specific scenario where it's located. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, and uh, I want to answer by two parts. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I, I tried to combine all types uh, of games in one complex in order to uh, give an orientation for gathering people together uh, and developing some news projects and startups. Uh, this can serve as both as uh, play space and workspace, um, and you can stay there for a long time. Uh, most often, uh, other complexes have a specific direction. Uh, like I said, uh, on the arcades or PC clubs uh, or um, stadiums for esports, I try to place everything uh, in my complex. Um, uh, 
as much as, as possible with the space. And um, mm, um, my uh, intention uh, was to have like the concrete exterior finish, so honest use uh, of concrete would uh, also use its uh, loud uh, bearing uh, capacity. Uh, you can clean all the floors inside and put something new there. Uh, um, yes, uh, you can't remove the exterior concrete walls, but uh, limited openings uh, can be considered. Uh, I recognize that uh, the building cannot be used for all other functions uh, as it's uh, closed and due uh, to the concept. Uh, it's designed only for gaming space, but it could be used uh, like exhibition complex uh, cinema uh, or some kind of mall. Uh, or uh, other types of entertainment. Um. Okay, and another uh, uh, last question, it's mm -hmm. gonna be short. Why there are two toilet pots in a one hostel room? Mm. Can you go to the plan? Yeah. <laughs> I'm really intrigued and I have, like, I have no clue. Is that something, is something to do with gaming or? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> uh, where? Next. In the hostel. Yeah, hostel. It takes some time. Yeah. <laughs> but they have these very comfortable toilets in Japan. No. Next. Where you, where you yeah. <laughs> very where comfortable. You can spend kind of Here. On the yeah, floor. for example, there. So the room number two. Okay. Okay. Ah, no, wait. Uh, um, uh, for example, uh, sorry. Yeah. There is <laughs> no, go next, actually. Sorry, go next. The yeah, the one there. The last one, I think, this was. The yeah. It was in the number four in the previous. Yeah, the corner one has it. Oops. And then, <laughs> and and the then the lower there. one has it. Uh, you mean here? Yeah. Okay, this is my fault, I think. Just, <laughs> just. Uh, I thought there's a reason. <laughs> uh, no, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I want to, to do this uh, level more um, luxury, like uh, uh, like in hotel, not this uh, hostel. And uh, it, here is not the. I don't know how in English the bed level beds like in hostels. Uh, yes, here just uh, for couples or the single beds. So uh, yeah. I can answer like this. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, I can answer. Have you ever sat on a Japanese toilet? It's really great. Uh, there's music, massage. <laughs> you have a heated uh, kind of. So you you can spend. Yeah, yeah, you can spend there kind of hours. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really cool. This is the part uh, of the rest. Uh, they play music. It's really cool. Here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why there are to two toilets in one room. Yeah. <laughs> That would, would be my answer in your... Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I would rather focus on the philosophical aspects which were, were already discussed, and I think this is very interesting uh, because uh, you belong to another generation than we do, and this is a quite interesting uh, thing, I guess, um, uh, especially in the context of the, the last uh, two and a half years and uh, with all these uh, kind of developments going on uh, also socially. And from the philosophical point of view, for me, this is kind of, um, uh, 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 if, you, uh, if you know, kind of this hetero heterotopy uh, from, or the heterotopic uh, concepts from, from uh, this uh, French philosopher, uh, Michel Foucault, who it's kind of a completely different world outside the real world, so you're kind of detached from the real world. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of, for me, it's kind of a gate uh, entering uh, another world uh, for maybe outsiders in a sense of uh, kind of generation, uh, I, or outside is maybe the wrong word, but it's it's kind of a very interesting, uh, re very interesting approach to have kind of this this uh, yeah this uh, virtual world, uh, and this is kind of the gate, and uh, I I really like that. Uh, Concerning more rational things, uh, yes, of course, the sustainability topic was already mentioned, what you can do with uh, wasted heat. I think this idea with uh, using it for, uh, for, for the pool would be a very nice, uh, very nice idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, yeah, cooling such a thing is uh, not so easy, I guess. But there will be solutions, and uh, maybe with water. I don't know. Thank you. 
Thanks for the presentation. Also, uh, I got the mixed feelings with the project too, <laughs> <laughs> because I have two kids that I had to tear from the computer like daily basis, <laughs> and uh, somehow you now created a prison for them and the excuse <laughs> for being there. And uh, also for me, it was really, uh, oh, no. it was the mind training for me to accept it, that uh, it's, it, it is considered as a normal way of uh, spending the time. Otherwise, otherwise, I would thought of this thing as a casino that you probably, <laughs> it's the bad thing and you shouldn't go there. Um, and every thought that I got with that, uh, oh, it could be more playful interior, for example, if it's created for the play. Uh, so it could have the physical physical play in kind of uh, in the sense of architecture too, mm -hmm. um, and then again my this other po like her half of the brain was telling me no they only want to be in the computer they don't mm -hmm. want to play in the interior, so uh, it was confusing and uh, mind training for me and I I, I even can't uh, yeah. Uh, don't for I can't form the question of it, but what maybe you can like say what is um, what is the main benefit not going to I casino but to go there? <laughs> I just Sorry. can say that uh, I have two younger sisters, and they are full in computers, and you can't do anything with it. it this is the modern time now and you can't do anything. And if, you, uh, if we can create some uh, good uh, spatial solutions, uh, uh, it, would, uh, it would be the good, uh, like, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, the best solution f f for, um, for us to, pr to do the present for the future, uh, like, young people and uh, uh, sorry I'm a bit nervous <laughs> yeah because uh, I know I, I play every, uh, without the diploma writing <laughs> uh, I play every day by myself and I have many friends and uh, I, this is the part of uh, of the life of many people so this was uh, this was a mix and combine my architectural knowledge and uh, my interest. So, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the presentation. So I was wondering. Um, so you you took some sort of like a starting point, and uh, I'm wondering why. Like if you investigated like more kind of hybrid approaches to this uh, deep building in terms of, for example, combining. Uh, this kind of gaming uh, typology with uh, with library or something like this, because if you think about the word virtuality, then there is like this known kind of graph where uh, virtuality can be on one side like simulated, so simulated virtuality is games basically it's artificial, and on the other side there is like a dream re uh, reality which is or dream virtuality which is basically like me reading a book or me sleeping and uh, yeah. imagining something. And if you if you look at those like uh, teams that participate there, they actually uh, live in like some huge houses together, and they take it as actually a, a, as a work. So they yes. they work from maybe the, the working hours are like uh, from ten o'clock in the evening till six o'clock in the morning, and then the rest of the time they're like, what should we do, right? So wh why not have like books or something to to to, to have like as a uh, as an alternative? So that was like one proposal. The other proposal would be to to, to maybe use this um, gaming as something uh, that can be beneficial to the whole society. So I, I have been part of a couple of hackathons as a mentor uh, in Mectory uh, for the last two years. And there's one topic that con constantly pops up. There are like a couple of teams that have been always like been interested in, in using this uh, idea of gamification to, to develop some applications or, or, or something that can be beneficial. So for example, uh, there is this famous game Pokemon Go, mm -hmm. but then this company Niantic uh, that developed it, they're actually looking into 
how could you actually gamify, let's say, uh, like you go to some place, you see a bottle or, or some trash or something, and you kind of like collect it. So there is the same thing, you collect the trash and then you kind of sort it and learn from it. Yeah. So to have this gaming center, but then some sort of like an incubator for, for using the gaming ideas to, to uh, benefit uh, the, the, the problems we have in society attached to it. And maybe that incubator part would be kind of flowing or opening to the, to the surroundings because the people who you know, work on stuff, they need like a good, uh, good kind of uh, environment to, to do that. And then this uh, rift in the middle is for the people to see the results or, or, or mm -hmm. to come to. Those are just suggestions. I understand you chose another path, but actually gaming is not always, it's not just like, oh, the game, we cannot do anything, but there are actually many benefits uh, yeah. from, from I wrote we can it in my that. theoretical part, but uh, it, it was a limited time. Uh, I, I don't have this uh, solutions in my project, but if I would have more time, for example, uh, to do more functions, what about you said? So this is the good point. Thank yes. you. Um, thank you very much for the interesting presentation. And um, I agree w with what I've been already said before that um, I think the, the form that you choose works well for the function because the self-contained and autoreferential, let's say, object uh, um, remind um, um, the game, actually. Uh, and also the fact that from one uh, of this fragment, when you want to see outside, when you want to see the other fragments, you are still uh, looking at screens. That, that, that is very it's interesting. Um, I have three questions, actually, but you can answer just one because we don't have time. <laughs> so, why, why, uh, why do not connect also directly gaming center and training center? Wait, I, I say, then, why not providing uh, at least one relaxed area looking outside also the external world, just as relax? And the third is, where do people eat? Where? Yeah. On the ground floors, there are dining rooms and cafeteria uh, in, in each uh, building on ground floor. There is a restaurant? Uh, cafeteria and dining rooms in each uh, building. Oh, okay, I didn't get it then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then thank you very much. <laughs> and then supervisor. Thank you for the comments. Uh, I'm very happy with Marta's work. It was a very interesting topic. I'm, I don't play myself, but uh, but from time to time, I check out what the games are doing because it's getting more and more realistic. And I think there's a big connection between architecture and, and let's say designing architecture, visualizing architecture and gaming. It's like the Unreal Engine is a, is a big platform that architecture is getting more and more involved. So I think there's, there's a big common ground and, and there are very many people who actually deal are gaming from every day. And oh, yes, some people have even problem with this, but it's something we cannot ignore, so I guess it's good if we deal with this. And, I, and it's like a different world for them, different dimension. And Mar Marta's project is like connecting, it's like a portal connecting these two different worlds or dimensions where they can actually, they can change the world and, and, and change, change scenery. So maybe yeah, the best answer would be just go in, walk in the park. The building itself, I see it as an as a introvertive building for introverted people, it's, it's, it's what they are, but already in the inside where the, the, the world is lit up, it's, it's already a bold statement, so, so it's between these two worlds, and, and it's also good to see that, good, that architecture is related to this kind of gaming, because like for me, first impression of gaming is like these ugly, totally neon light computers, and it's good to see some kind of nice design related to gaming for a change. So, but it's also quite bold you know, in, his, in his bright lights and neons, but I think it's uh, good. It's done in a tactful, tactful sense, so. Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, sometimes difficult with Marta because of the different languages and things, but, but in some regards, she's very, very good, like visualizing and, and modeling and things. She's very good, so in some regard, it was easy. In some regard, it was maybe difficult to communicate, but I think this is okay. So, I'm glad to be here with you, so thank you very much. <laughs> Last word or? Yeah, last word if you'd like to. Uh, 
Yeah, maybe I just want to thank you all like for your attention and I want to thank uh, you all are, uh, are, oh my god, <laughs> sorry, like uh, you always uh, support me and it was a very uh, difficult uh, task for me because uh, it was uh, like the challenge for me to do, to combine my uh, interests and uh, my knowledges. So, but I'm glad with my project and uh, I'm happy <laughs> to present it today for you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Marta. Thank you. Yeah, let's take a five-minute break before the last project of this oh defense. Uh.
Yes. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we will start with our last presentation for this defense. This master thesis is presented by Mia Natka, and her supervisor is Ioannis Lukouras. Mm -hmm. So, hello, everybody. I'll speak in Estonian, but later uh, we'll speak in English. Um, glad to see you all here. Uh, let's uh, end it with um, a good one. <laughs> So uh, my top lineulistical uh, thesis, we know magistered pealgeantis and microcodot urbanisticus homes. Yeah, petal green because we want it environmentally. Because it does go along with the climate. That yellow is meant to suit me to vastate the case of because it's a mood that we're going to talk about. And this is the new world. It's just a mood that's going to be graphic, more than just a case. Trendides on esile kerkinud siis vajadusnutikate ning kompaktsete eluasemete ehk siis mikrokodude järele. Aga kui võrd mikrokodud tekitavad nii hoones sees, aga ka selle ümber uusi nüüd elamisvorme, siis nõuab see natuke evatraditsioonilisemat lähenemist nii avaliku kui ka privaatse luumi loomisel. Ma kistritees otsin siis vastus küsimusele, et kuidas uua kali kvaliteetne ning kohapõhine linna ja eluruum, mis vastab siis mikroelamise alusprinsiipidele ja ka tänapäevase koha kujundamise põhimõtetele. Ning lähtepunktiks on siis ajaloolise põrandi väärtustamine ja kõige selle taaskasutamine ja integreerimine linnapilti ning ka eluaseme turu mitmekesistamine lähtudes siis muutustest ühiskonnas. Magistritöös on uurimisprobleeme kaks tükki. Esiteks siis selle maha jäetud ajaloolise põrandi integreerimine kaasaega ja selle väärtustamine läbi aktiivse kasutamise. Ning teiseks ka siis Londoni eluaseme turul ole puudus hästi toimivale mikroelamiskeskkonnale. Aga see juures siis ehituspõrandi nii-öelda rekonstrueerimine või kaasajastamine ei ole lahendus selle kvaliteetse koha loomisele. Ja... COVID-19 ning igajastu või ütleksin, et on rõhutanud inimeste vajadust sijootuse järele. Ning selleks, et inimesed tunneksid end sijootuna, ning kuuluvuna on olevuline, et see ümbritsel linna ruum siis põimiks neid tähendusi ja tegevusi ja tundeid, mis on sijootud kogukonna, aga ka kultuurilise identiteediga. Töö uurimus ja teoreetiline osa on siis jaotatud neljaks peadükiks. Esimene käsitleb magistritöö teemat, ülevaadet ja esmärke. Teine pead käsitleb konteksti, et sellest on välja Londoni eluaseme nii-öelda hetkeseisu, aga ka tuleviku visiooni ning annan siis lühi ülevaatega nende kaasimahutite ajaloost. Kolmandas peadükis on siis antaks ülevaade ruumi ja koha erinevates mõistetest ning viimases peadükis tuvaks see välja mikroelamise põhimõtted, selle sihtrüht ning selle mõju ka inimese tervise üle. Kui natuke rääkida siis Londonist, et Londoni eluaseme tegelikult puudus on tekinud siis aastakümnete pikkune suutmatus pakkuda kasvavas majanduses töötavatel inimestele piisava arve eluasemeid. Kui statistikat vaadata, siis alates 1997. aastast on töökohtad arv kasvanud 45%. Ja sama aja jooksul on inimeste arv Londonis kasvanud 28%, aga... Sinna ei ole järgi jõudnud elamut arvu kas, mis on kasvanud kõigest 20%. Ning kui me räägime mikrokodudes, siis oluline on ka statistika, et viimase 20 aasta jooksul on nii-öelda netto sissevool Londonis 20 aastate seas ning netto nii-öelda väljavool siis 30 aastate ja vanemate seas. Ning statistikatuurides tuli välja ka üks murekoht, nimelt ülerahvastatus, kui võrd siis elamut, Eluasemeid ei ole piisavalt ja nii-öelda mitmekesiselt, siis inimesed elavad ülerahvustatult korterites. 2020. aasta lõpus pea 15% Londoni majapidamistest olid ülerahvustatud. Ning kui rääkida siis Londoni eluaseme visioonist ja arengukaast, siis nad näevad, et uued elukohad ja linnaosad peavad olema hästi kujundatud ning sobima London laste erinevad elukohad eluaseme vajadustega. Ning tähtis on ka see, et elamusarendustega kaasneksid ka investeeringud 
siis teenustest ja rajatitsesse, mis toetaks seda sotsiaalsete infrastruktuuri. Ja põnevana leidsin ka seda, et nii-öelda eluasemtulu tasakaalustamiseks soovivad nad, et pakutaks nii-öelda erasektori üürimiseks siis ehitatud koduseid, et need oleks kuidagi see reguleeritavad. Ja siis ma kiiresti näitan, et millega me tegeleme on kaasimahutid, et neid on kolm eri struktuuri, on siis sellised kinnised hoones sees, on sellised tugiraamistikud ning viimane on siis spiraalmahuti. Ja kui vaadata Londoni kaarti, siis maha kriipsutatud on need, mis on juba nii-öelda demonteeritud. Halliga on näha siis valamas olevad. Üks tumehall on samuti nii-öelda ümber ehitatud kaasimahuti ning punases kohas on siis projektala. Nii, autentse kohatunde säilimiseks on olnud mõista selle koha identiteeti ja tähendusi selle kasutajale, sest et vastasel juhul sünnivadki siis standardiseeritud ning ebaautentsed linnamaastikud. Kohtade ja nende kogemuste nii-öelda kujundamine tegelikult oma oluliselt tähtsamad rolli, kui lihtsalt igapäevaste tegevuste kätte saadavaks tegemine. Läbi koha loome siis püüdaksegi planeerimine, Planeerimise ja ärendamise käigus siis tunnustada koha majanduslikke keskkonna alaseid ning ka sotsiaalseid eripärasi. Ja selle eesmärk on siis läbi protsessi ja lõptulamusena luua selline koha tunnetus ning kogukonna kokku kuuluvust tunne. Ja siin slaidil on näha siis MTÜ Project for Public Spaces tehtud selline diagram, mis aitab, mis tahes suurusega avaliku ruumi ja nii-öelda kujundamist ja selle kogukonna kaasamist, et nad on jaotanud selle teagrambi neljaks, mis on siis ligipääsetavus ühendavus, mugavus ja esteetilisus, tegevuste ning kasutusviiside oma olemasolu ning sotsiaalne keskkond. Ja lähtuvad sellest siis, see on abiks nii-öelda siis kohtade planeerimisel. Ja natuke rääkida ka siis mikraelust, kuna see on projekti suur osa, siis... Nad on populaarsed sellepärast, et kui kunagi oli nii-öelda eluaseme kujunduses keskusel kohal selline tuumperekonna mudel, siis nüüd on lisandunud mitmesugused leibkonnad ning seda populaarsust põhjendabki just pigem üksikleibkondade kasv. Aga teiselt võib ka selle suure nii-öelda huvi ja populaarsuse põhjustada ka näiteks keskkonnateadlikum või siis minimalistikum elustiil et kus siis vähendatakse vabatahtlikult tarbimist ja öeldakse lahti ebavajalikust. Ja keskuse lähedus ning see väike elamispind meelitab nii üksid leibkondasi kui ka näiteks noori spetsialiste, kes on siis mikrokorterite peamine sihtrü, sest et nemad veedavad oluliselt vähem aega kodus sees. Nad eelistavad elada siis linnakeskusele ligital, linnakeskusele ning töökohale ligital, ning vabaaja veetmiseks nad kasutavad rohkem siis linna avaliku ja sotsiaalset ruumi. Kui me räägime üles ehiduses, siis mikroelamutega kaasnevad sageli ka ühiskondlik mugavused, ehk siis avatud eluruumid ühistegevuseks, sotsiaalsed nurgad hoones sees, mis siis aitavad ka selle üksildusega toime tulla, mis selles fisikeses eluruumis elamine võib tekitada. Ja elamupind on oluline, et see oleks liiga kitsas või klaustrofoobiline, sest et sellest tulenev stress võib suurendada siis koduvägivalda, ainete kuritarvitamist ja ka endasse tõmbumis- või keskendumisprobleeme. Nii, uute näiks maa. Nii, arjektuune projekt. Ma kestrude arhituune projekt näeb siis, et tühjana seisvad tööstluslike kaasimahutite ala taaselustamise ning sellesse piirkonda mõjuse keskpunkti loomise. Kui ma tegin piirkondane analüüsi, siis selgus, et selles asukohas puudub selline suuremahutsim koht, kus inimesed saaksidki koguneda ja suhelda ning tugineda siis statistikale ja eluasemisektori analüüsile Londonis. Ilmnelt lisaks, et see praegune eluasemi turg ei pakku hiskonna nõudlusele vastavaid uudseid ning kompaktseid elukohti. Magistrides kehitleda projektala asub siis Londonis, Pehtmaaküüni linna ases umbes 6 km siis Londoni kesklinnast, mis siis asub siin. Ta on väga hästi liigipääsetav ühistranspordiga, umbes 20 minuti kaugusel küllikud ühistranspordiga. Kui rääkida nii-öelda kinnistest endast, ta on endine siis tööstusmaa, 
mida ilmestavad seal paiknavad siis neli kaasimahutid. Et ülemised on siis nagu näha need raam kaasimahutid ning kaks alumist siin on siis spiraalmahutid. Et asukoha mõttes on ta siis seda ümbritsevad peamiselt elamakvartalid, aga siin vahetuslähetuses asuvad ka näiteks ürituskeskused, toiduäärid, väga palju selliseid loov- ja produktsiooni ettevõtteid ning ka poode. Ja asendeplaanile lahendus siis lähtub kinnistu olemusolevast tööstusparandist. Et siin kaks ülemiste tugiraami säilitatakse täielikult ning siis kahe alumise, nagu nägite, spiraalmahutite asemel pakutakse siis hoonestusite mõnek. Ja kui võrd ala asub linnaliselt kessel kohal, pääseb selle ligi erinevates suundudest, nii siis tänava suundudest kui ka ülevalt jää järjest. Ja siis Londoni nii-öelda siis iseloomus ning eesmärkest lähtuvalt on suur rõhk pandud kergliikle mugavusele ning otastumise vähendamisele. Ning kui rääkta sellest jääkaldes siin üleval, siis eelnevalt on see 180 aastat olnud nii-öelda kinni ajaga, eks siis ei ole saadud liikuda siit läbi. Ning projekt lahendus siis näebki ette, et see ala avatakse nii-öelda ning seotakse see linnaruumiga. Ja siin on veel näha, et projektala jääb siia hoonete tagusesse alasse, mis tõttu on seal turvaline ja mugav liigelda nii-öelda kärgliikle ajal. Aga sellegi poolest mõtleks, et see ala on väga hästi vaadelda. Esiteks nende kõrgete tugiraamud tõttu, aga ka sellepärast, et see ei ole ära navatud. Ehk siis avanevad vaated otsa ja teise poolt kallast sellene. Nii, alale on siis kavandatud tugiraamidega ümbritsetud väljakala ning selle kõrval ka raami sisse projekteeritud palgimaastik. Ja selle nii-öelda lahenduse eesmärgiks on siis selle ajaloolise brändi austamine ning nii-öelda suuruse ja hiilguse esiletõstmine. Et palgimaastiku näol on tegu siis looklava maastikuga, mis viib külastaja siis läbi läbi haljastuskingast ja siis läbi kaasimahutite. Seal saab aega veeta nii privaatsemates sopides kui ka siis käigude ja ääres olevate siistumsalades ning seal on kasutatud ka pinnast läbi lask vaid pinnaskatteid. Ning kui me räägime raamises, siis sinna on projekteeritud väljakala. Ta on kontrastiks mõned aastane nii-öelda madalamal tänava pinnast, sest et rõhutada siis seda nii-öelda kõrgust kaasimahuti pahel. Ja kuigi väljak nii-öelda tavapäraselt on sihustatud konteinerharjastuste, välitegevuste ja pinkidega, siis on ette nähtud see kui pandlik linnaruum, et teisaldavate esemetega on väga lihtne ja võimalik väljaks või üles saada väga eriilmelise nii-öelda sõnaoriume, näiteks kas siis välikino või siis teater, kontsed või hoopis pühapäevaturg, et sellel on siis kogukonnal on suur osa otsustada, mis selle väljakuga toimub. Nii. Projekt lahendusest nagu mõtlesin, pakutakse kinnistule kaks hoonet. Mõlema hoone esimesel korrusel asuvad siis rendipinnad ning ülemistel elupinnad. See ruumiprogrammiline rõhk on siis suunatud mitmekesisele kasutusele. Silmas on peetud nii töö, äri kui ka siis meelelahutus ja sotsiaalse funksioone. Näiteks nagu muuseum või loomingulne studia. Hoonete ruumiprogrammis ning funksionaalse jaatusel on siis läbi töötatud nii-öelda üks võimalik sõnaarium, mis toetaks selle, toetaks elada seda ümbruskonna, ümbruskonda, aga sinna võib aja jooksul luua nii-öelda erinevad sõnaariume, et see on muutuv nii-öelda ruum. Need pakutud funksioonid on siis suhestuvad otseselt väliskeskonnaga, ehk siis nad on paigutatud vastava klientuurile, et kuhu võiks sisse astuda nii-öelda mööduvinimene ning mis on võibolla olemuselt pigem privaatsem. Näiteks siia väljaku poole on projekteeritud siis muusem, mis on nii-öelda rohkem avalikul suunatud ja siin allpool on siis koostöötamisruumid, mis on samuti väga hästi ligipääsetavad, aga nad jäävad sellest suurest nii-öelda sagimisest natuke näemale. Siis hoone... Esimese koruselt on võimalik pääseda ka sisse õue, mis siis avab endas märksa nii-öelda teissuguse vaatepildi, et see on puiduselt soe ning meeldivad looduslähedane ja selle keskmiseks on siis rahala 
mis mõjuks siis inimest, siseruumis inimestele tervisele tervendavalt. Nagu ütlesin siis esimese koru, hoone esimese koru see äripinnad suuremal hoonel on läbi kahe koruse ning väiksemal hoonel on teisel korusel juba elupinnad. Ülemsel korusel on ette nähtud siis mikrokorteriteks ning nende ühisruumideks. Kuna magistrite uurimuslik osas leidsin, et mikrokorterite väiksuse tõttu võivad elanikud tunda ennast üksikuna või ahistatuna, siis võib on ühiskondlike ruumide lisamine äärmiselt oluline. Siis räägin mikrokorterite enda lahendusest. See on siis saanud inspiraatsiooni Jaapan interiörist ja Tatami Mattidest. Selle keskeks lahendusprintsiibiks on siis elamik, ela elamohiku kasutusviisid rohkus. Kui me töötame väikeste ruumidega, siis on hästi oluline visuaalselt seda ruumi suurendada. See tõttu on elamohikus siis ruumide eraldamiseks ette nähtud sellele traditsioonilise seina ja ukse, äh, uksele natuke alternatiivseid võimalusi. Üheks nendeks on siis ruumide eraldamine nende kõrguste abil. Ja selleks, selle korteri lahenduse peamiseks nii-öelda Peamiseks kohaks ongi see multifunktsionaalne tasand, mis asub teeb siin, et ta peidab endas erinevad kasutusvimalus, et näiteks on see võimalik muuta ka söögi taaks või siis hoopis elu taaks. Ja selle korteri pinna siis mahubki siis esike, on nii juba kööginurk, siis nii-öelda elutsoon, mis on võimalik muuta ja ka privaatne rõdupind. Et Nende privaatse rõdupinna toomine nende mikrokorteritesse on väga oluline ka nende elanikele, mis siis, sest et see on oluline nende faktor parandamaks selle väikses ruumis elaniku tervist. Nii mikrokorteritesse nii-öelda siseviimistluses on siis kasutatud harmoonilist ja naturaalset materjallahendust, et läbi oma materjalina on kasutatud puitu selle vastupidavuse, keskkonna sõrvalikkuse ning akustilise ja tervist parandavad omaduste tõttu. Mikrokorterid on planeeritud nii ühekorruselised nagu tõne nägite ja ka kahekorruselised. Et see kahekorruseline lahendus on analoogne sellele eelnevale nähtule. Et siin on võimalus siis kaheksem magamistavaks erinevatel korrustel ka samamoodi nendel kõrgendatul tasanditel. Alumse korrusel on siis vannituba ja ülemisele kõik ja samuti rõdupinnad. Madala, ma räägin fassaadides, siis madalama hoone fassaad on siis tulenud sellest, et seal on rohkem avalike ruume, on seal rohkem klaaspinda. Need on fassaadiste tagasi astuvad, mis tõttu puudub oht liigsele väikse kirkusele. Ja nii-öelda need eenduvad siis rõdupinnad, need ilmestavad ka kaasimahutite nii horisontaalseid ringe. Ja kõrgem hoone on siis oma olemuselt privaatsem, mis tõttu on fassaadi kujundamisel lähtetud natuke reissugusest lahendusest. Esimese avalik korus on samuti oh, klaaspindadega, et avada siis siseruum nii-öelda õue sinna ette, aga järgmistel korustel on siis kasutatud tapelt passaadsüsteemi, kus siis prefereeritud metallist elemente võimalik lahti ja kinni võltida, et avada siis rõdu või aknapind. Ning see tekitab selle passaadil siis sellise alati muutuva nägemuse. Mõlemad hooned on kavandatud riskiht liimpuidust et kandat elementidega, et kandeskeletimu kutustavad vahelaed ning radiaalselt siis paiknevad seinad ning mõnes kohas ka postid. Ja kokku võtaks siis Pehnal Grinnis kaasemahutide naabruskond, see on pandiklinnaruum, mida saab arendada, muuta ja kohandada vastavalt siis erinevate kasutusviisidele. Et lisaks sellele, et projektlahendus arendab selle piirkonna strateegilist planeeringud suuremas pildis, väärtustab ja edendab see ka linna ajaloolist ja kultuurilist konteksti. Ning ma lisaks ei lõppu, et selleks, et, et see kohaloomel oleks veelgi suurem väärtus ja tähendus, et siis ma isegi ma näen ette, et see, just see planeerimise osa siis ole, see on võimalus isegi eda, edasi arendada see projekti 2.0 versioon, kus siis otseselt kasvatakse selle kogukonna liikmed, äride organisatsioonid, et läbi töötada veel erinevaid senaariume, mis saaks siin alale luua. Aitäh! Aitäh! Next uh, we will hear the reviewers uh, or the review.
retsentsiooni on kirjutanud Maria Freiman. Lõpuda autor on võtnud käsile väga aktuaalsed uurimisprobleemid ning on selgelt ja veenvalt sõnastanud magistritöö lähtepunktideks olevad uurimisküsimused. Autor uurib, kuidas leida lahendusi Londoni eluaseme kriisil ja kavandades projektlahendusena mikrokorterites koosneva mitmekesistes, mitmekesiste ühisaladega hoonete kompleksi ning otsib lahendusi ajaloolise Petnal Green kaasimahutite ala taaselustamisele lähtudes koha, kohaloome prinsiipidest. Kiidan julgust võtta käsitluse alla väga komplekset teemad, mille analüüsi edasi arenduse käigus on autor suhtnud sünteesida tervelikult mõjuva ning intrigeeriva projektlahenduse. Selgelt argumenteerides jõuab autor järelduseni, et Londoni eluaseme kriisi lahendamisel on esmatähtis leida lahendus võimalikult kvaliteetsete ja elanike põhivajadusi rahultavate renditavate mikrokorterite rajamiseks just nendesse piirkondadesse, kus paiknevad töökohad ja kus soovivad, inimesed soovivad elada. Analüüsi käigus toob autor välja, et mida väiksem on elamispind, seda suurem on vajadus täiendavate sotsiaalsete tegevuste ja teenuste järele. Samas hoonekompleksis või siis selles vahetuslähetuses. Eriti reliefselt ilmeb see vajadus lähtudes sihtgruppi analüüsist, kelles 71% moodustavad 16-34 aastased aktiivses õppimise ja töötamise faasis noored. Siin peitub ka suur potentsiaal, kui tuua kukk, Kokku kriitiline mass noori ühte elanik elukeskonda loob see täiendava pinnase uute suhete äriteede ettevõtete tekimiseks ning vähendab praegust elamispindade kriisist tulenevat üksilduse ja sotsiaalse isoleerituse mõju, mida koovi 19 aegne kohustuslik distantseerumine veelgi võimendas. Taaselustatud Petnal Kriini ajalooliste kaasimahutute piirkonda läbi kohalame põhiprinsiipide loob lahendus elamispindadele elamispindade kriisile ka uue hingamise tervele naabruskonnale tuues koos projektiga sinna uusi elanike, teenuseid ja avalike tegevusi, mis võimaldavad tekkida sidusamal ning elul juurisimel keskkonnal, kogukonnal. See konseptsioon toimib endisest, endistes tööstusalades hästi. Oluline on saavutada kritiline mass võimalikult mitmekesiseid ja eri sistgruppidele kätte saadavaid avalike tegevusi ning teenuseid ja samas säilitada ajaloolise ruumipärandi unikaalsus, mis loob kohas sihtpunkti kogu linnale. Seda on autor filigraanselt teinud, muutes vana kaasimahutite tugistruktuuri üksnes asustamatas kulturaalsest vormist uut pargiruumi ümbritsevaks ja uusi piire defineerivaks linnaruumi organiseerivaks objektiks. Hästi õnnestunud kohalame prinsiipidest lähtev lahendus loob asukohas kiiresti kõrgelt hinnatud tõmbepunkti, mis asub, asub tõstma kinnisvara väärtus kogu piirkonnas, algab kiire tsentrifikeerumise protsest. Erinevalt autori pakutud mikrokorterite lahendustest on Londonis Kings Crossi alale asja taaselustatud kaasimahutid uute luksuskorteritene. Ka Tallinnas on tööstuskvartelite taaselustamisel muutud, muutunud varem maha jäätud alat lühikese ajaga Tallinna kallame ruutmetri hinnaga korterite piirkonnaks. Kui suurene näeb autor riski, et Petnal Pet Greeni alal võib muutuda mikrokodude lahendus vähestele kätte saadavaks, nii öelda luksustooteks. Teoreetilises osas analüüsitud ideed ja eraldused on jõudnud projektlahenduses terviklikku ning uudsene mõjuva arhitektuurse lahenduseni, kus uutes hoonetes on kokku seotud detailsed läbilahendatud elamise ühikud ning korrustele loodud täiendavad pool privaatset ühisruumi ja alumistel korrustel ülkasutatavaid pindu nagu koostöötamise ruumid ja alad sotsialiseerumiseks. Sellest tüüpi mitmekesise kasutusega hooneid on täna loodud üsna väikses maus, kui nii suurel skaalal omavad kindlasti suurt potentsiaali kogu ümbritseva elukoskõna aktiveerimisel. Kuna töö on fokusseeritud Londonile, siis oleks põnevi siin kohal küsida, kuidas näeb autor elupindade kätte saadavuse küsimus Tallinna kontekstis. Kas on sarnasid trende, kuidas sellele siin lahendusi on otsitud? Projektlahendus on varmistatud esteetiliselt nauditavana ning enesekindla konkreetsusega. Graafiliselt on kiirelt hoomatavad hoonesse kavandatud erinevad funksioonide, paigutus ja omavahelised seosed. 3D visualiseeringud on väga kõrge taselmised ning võimaldavad emotsionaalselt ennast kohe kavandatud ruumilahenduse paigutada. Peenelt välja mudeldatud detailid lisavad kavandisse taktiilsust ja annavad kindluse, et projekt on põhjalikult läbi lahendatud. Eeltoodud arvesse võttes pakkun tööle hindeks viis. Suure pärane. Maria Freini. Ja kui soovid sõna, siis on see ja. et Retsensioonis tekis siis kerkis esile kaks küsimust. Et esimene oli seotud siis selle luksus, luksus tootana. Et, et ma olen, et eestlasena me võime vaadelda seda kui luksuskaupa, aga võibolla Londonis on see kontekst natuke teissugune. 
et see luksus kaupa fenomen võib, võib olla eelkõige tekida siis, kui puudub ühiskondlik huvi linna ja investorite poolt ning siis selle imidži pärast see kaubanduslik, kaubanduslikult üritatakse siis need pinnad kallilt maha müüa. Ning kui rääkida nii-öelda siis selle natuke ehitusprotsessis, siis kindlasti on see kallim ehitada nende vanade spira spiraalmahutite asemele, kui, kui see oleks lihtsalt tühikrõnd. Aga nii-öelda ma olen hoon traktöörimisel silmas pidanud seda, et see kandakonstruktsioon on läbi korrusta identne, ehk siis need elemente on optim optimaalsem nii-öelda toota, aga ka platsil siis nagu ehitus on selle võrra kergem ning lisaks sellel on siis pakutud sellele hoonetele mitmekesi siit avalike funksioone, mis siis natukene just kui tekitavad seal selle raha ringluse efekti. Ja ma võibolla pigem näen, et ta on luksuskaup siis võibolla mitte nii-öelda majanduslikus mõttes, aga pigem just nende funksioonide mõttes, mida, mida ta endaga kaasa toob. Ning siis oli teine küsimus seotad siis Eesti kontekstiga, et korras kui rääkida Londonis, siis see eluaseme kriis või see kättesaadavuse probleem on pigem sellest, et need on vähe ja need ei ole nii-öelda õiges vastavalt vajadusele, aga Eestis on pigem see, ma näen seda, kui et need pinnad on pigem kättesaavatud sellepärast, et need on kallid. Ja kui rääkida nii-öelda Mika elamu pindadest, siis kuigi ma antud magistide raames ei teinud nii-öelda Eesti turuuringut, Siis, siis ma ei tea, et otseselt sellist mikro elamiskeskkonda oleks Eestis ehitatud. Et ma tean seda, et päris palju uued arendused, väike protsent nendes on selliseid pisemaid umbes 35 ruutuseid elamupindasi. Et ma mäletan siin samas Tass Haus seal Tõnismäel, et seal ma vist esimest korda nägin üpris, üpris palju oli sellise 35 ruutuseid kvartalit seal. Seega toetab seda, et nad on linna keskel, et, see, et siis töö ja töökoht ja elukoht on nii-öelda vahetuslähetuses ja tekibki siis kogu see linna nii-öelda sinu sotsiaalne eluruum. Ja aga mina arusku, nagu rääkida siis Eesti kontekstist nii-öelda sellest mikro, mikro elamuses, siis tegelikult on palju põnevam meie nii-öelda ettevõtjate visioon sellest, sest et Eestis on väga palju ettevõtjate, kes on tegutsen nii-öelda nende äh, mõne öö nii-öelda peatamis paikadena, mis on siis lahendatud mikro, mikrotasandil, näiteks nagu Ööthaus, kes on juba Eestis palju kaugemale levinud, ma kuulsin isegi Kaanasse ja veel, veel kaugemale. Või siis väga kehtid on lahendatud see hektor container hotel, mis on siis natuke selline mishi koopa, aga seal samamoodi on siis väiksed elamupinnad ja siis sotsiaalsed ruumid. Et siis et sellise on mikro, mikro lahendamise viis. Thanks. I guess that was the answer. Yeah, that was the answer. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah as I didn't understand, uh, or I cannot understand Estonian, so I, uh, and I didn't understand the word, so I will start with questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I have a uh, few questions or just some comments. Uh, one of the few words I understood was lux lux luxus. Or yeah, luxury. Yeah, luxury yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, as I know London a bit, and uh, also some friends of mine are living in London, uh -huh. uh, and they're working as architects or as uh -huh. university teachers, and they would be really happy to live in such a big apartment <laughs> with kind of in this uh, in this condition, uh, because uh, I think that's a big topic for for London. Probably you already answered the question, so I'm I'm, I'm uh, skipping this, but. Um, I also wanted to compare with a project which ran wrong in Vienna. Uh, there's this gasometer uh, project uh, where quite uh, um, good architects, or kind of, well, let's say famous architects were involved, like uh, Kopp Jümmelblau and, and uh, Jean Novel, for example. Uh, I don't want to judge any other <laughs> architects except of you at the moment. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and this uh, project went terribly wrong because uh, I think one of the reasons was kind of uh, maximization of, of, of uh, the, the space uh, provided for kind of uh, renting purposes, sell, uh, uh, kind of maximization of, of uh, living, uh, of kind of sellable space. Uh, and um, uh, you took care of this, as I see, kind of lightning situation in Gasometer is a difficult situation because you have this round yeah. uh, floor plan. 
Uh, so this is uh, quite a nice solution. Also that you, I don't understand, or I didn't understand from your presentation why you left these two gasometers uh, free. Uh, uh, it's because of, uh, I want to mm, celebrate, but the, the historic value would get lost if I would, I would uh, build all around it. And also if uh, these gasometers are full of housing, the area near the river and it becomes very dark because okay. it blocks all the light. So uh -huh. it becomes like a big wall uh, near the riverside. Good. Okay. Um, so um, my extra question is, uh, you're writing in your thesis about uh, uh, planning as a process. Um, in your opinion, should uh, how should, uh, why should, uh, in your opinion, current planning be, be changed to kind of this this uh, this way of, of planning as a process, and and how could that be facilitated? Mm -hmm. So you. I just want to your opinion. Yeah, I think uh, it's it is rather important to uh, gather the knowledge and uh, information from the locals, the uh, uh, enterprises, because they, for them to have the word, the word uh, in saying uh, how the environment looks, because otherwise uh, we, lost, we lose the sense of place there. It becomes maybe unauthentic if someone else uh, uh, says that this, they need this, not, uh, not themselves, uh, speaking uh, what they see as this environment like. And, uh, I mean, the process of uh, getting the knowledge and having this discussion is, I'm sure, very uh, uh, rather difficult and challenging. But uh, and it needs to be coordinated very wisely, I think. Otherwise, it becomes just a loss of information, and nothing really gets attached. So um, there need <laughs> there needs to be a definite like structure how it is done. Uh, in my thesis, I'm not pro proposing one. But uh, I, I just would like to point out that there needs to be, like I think beforehand done some research how it's, uh, how it's best to gather this knowledge and implement it so that it would be valuable for the planners as well. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, there was one, one uh, research project presented yesterday, the first one in the morning, I guess. Yeah. I, good, uh, I exchange, mm -hmm. good particip participation, yeah. collaboration. We have to <laughs> do <processes. our> teamwork <laughs> and yeah. then get to the end point. <laughs> Mm, I also really appreciate how you bring um, or you keep the identity of, of the place and the historic layers of it um, untouched and, uh, and sort of uh, uh, also even enforced uh, through, the, through the existing structures but also implementing new ones that don't have to be anymore cylindrical, right? Because you're not actually using the old foundations of the of the gasometer, you're mm -hmm. you're making a totally new building with its own foundations, etc. Mm -hmm. So I think it's um, I think it's still uh, really positive that you uh, that you try to keep it in a, in the same um, um, idea. And I do think that uh, I see the the huge potential here in terms of growth. And I do think that um, if if this part you will manage to get this part working. I think at least I would take the, the left upper one and make it immediately another apartment building. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, one thing, um, I think this like cylindrical uh, typology is, is fetishized among architects a lot. And then for example, Greg Lynn is a huge fan of the Marina City in Chicago. There are these kind of parking towers on the lower part and then uh, some kind of um, uh, more public space in upper part, or other way around actually. Uh, yeah, the lower part is uh, is publicly used, and then the parking upstairs. And I'm I'm wondering, um, did you think of parking, or as this is really like a parking typology, it could help you to solve certain problems that one would have in this kind of area when you insert I don't know a few hundred people to live there, but you don't actually provide new areas for. Uh, to where to leave your car? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. Uh, with parking, uh, for the uh, public functions, there is like a strip of parallel parking, but for the uh, 
for the uh, for the people who live there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I didn't uh, propose like an underground parking system or uh, like a big uh, parking house because of it's London. Firstly, because if it's, it's London, so people don't own that many cars uh, to get around the public transport. There are uh, bus, uh, metro and uh, train stations very close by. And uh, because of the target group, they are uh, young workers. Probably it's very highly likely that uh, they might come to London for, I don't know, a year because they work in, um, in a worldwide organization. and. Uh, they are proposing, for example, yeah, work a year in London and then we will move you somewhere else. So they don't get attached to the city, they don't own uh, this um, transportation vehicle. So, and uh, yes, London, the vi vision from the city uh, enhanced that uh, we shouldn't uh, make like comfortable solutions for car parking because it, it would make, uh, 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 it would uh, increase the amount of cars in the city, and uh, yeah, mm. that's. I guess you, you can always uh, integrate that, like uh, underground, yeah, yeah, if, if, if necessary. Yes. Um, but I think that the topology really supports that that this becomes a, it. It's, it just has certain way of parking or like a spiral helix movement mm -hmm. also embedded. So I think that's a it huge potential. Be. And then I also see that potential in terms of the circula circulating inside of the house. So I would have even been uh, more interested of like how you move or you circulate in the house. It's not slab based anymore mm -hmm. as, as all the surrounding buildings, but could there be much more of um, enforcing the internal movement with, uh, with, with helix or spiral uh, way. Mm -hmm. But another topic I want to discuss is the um, micro apartments. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering why you, um, um, because you, micro apartment is like 14 to 30, two square meter apartment and uh, and you have picked sort of the the bigger end of it you know like mm -hmm. 30 square meter is the smaller one and the big ones are 56 already yeah, these or, are not micro anymore so yeah yeah, yeah exactly mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but even like the the 30 square meter one and i, I i've had these discussions a lot and then i think uh, patrick is patrick schumacher is one of the uh, the sort of the uh, speed a person uh, who's uh, speaking for the fact that, that we should have this easy jet style housing, meaning that um, that in 2015 London um, uh, f enforced a new uh, law that says that uh, one cannot uh, design a lower, smaller unit than 38 square meter um, apartment, and and due to that there's. Uh, uh, for example, Patrick is arguing that we should have half of it. And those that were uh, used beforehand, the 20 square meter, truly micro apartments, mm -hmm. they are in a super high uh, ranking and so the, uh, they're really expensive in terms of uh, this is actually the scale that it's uh, needed. So this new law that is not allowing to construct smaller ones is, uh, is is creating is is one of the creators of of this kind of uh, problematics that they have uh, the lack of uh, units, and I'm wondering now then why did you pick up the um, the scale the 30 square meters because I thought first that it's connected to the grid that you're using but you're not really guided by the grid I think uh, so your pillars and uh, your walls are not really matching so I'm, I'm wondering where the 30 square meter comes from and could it be smaller mm -hmm. actually um, I don't know if I can, I can show here that uh, the apartments lie just in between the two um, uh, load bearing walls so it's uh, here and here it's the load bearing wall and there's a partition wall in between so that so the grid that's from downstairs, it continues up. It's just like divided ah, by okay. half. But here, they, I mean, they're not really matching here. Because I... Uh, the apartments well, are... Like, I mean, for example, this wall. This, ah. These are marks. These continue. Uh -huh. And also Okay, and, and you just uh, yeah. leave some out. Yeah, because these are the... And this structure, the length or the width of, uh, of this is coming from where? It continues from the straight yeah, but line. Like, uh, can it be shorter? Meaning that can you have uh, smaller apartments inside? So if we would reduce the width of this, we could have more. 
we could have smaller apartments, right? So where the 30 mm -hmm. square meter comes from? Like this, is, well, I want to arrive, like why is it yeah. as it is? I think I found this uh, scale or the 30 square meters uh, because um, if we make them narrower, they become very long. So the, the space uh, might not be used so, so well because it's very narrow and deep. deep. And uh, this, the micro apartment, there is a lot of debate about uh, what size is micro and it varies from city to city. There's no like uh, worldwide definition. This is micro because... What is the Wikipedia says? It's 14 to 30. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, in, uh, for example, in Asia, the micro apartments are smaller because of the culture. And uh, in uh, other cities, they are a bit bigger. It, it depends on the overall uh, housing market and how the, how the units are there. But... Um, uh, the, I, as I said, the, I didn't want to make it narrow, so that's why it's uh, as wide as it is. And uh, for, for it to be very small, I think it starts to play with uh, your uh, physical uh, health, uh, mental health and physical health as well, because the room uh, gets uh, a lot uh, smaller. And but then I guess the, the reviewers comment on luxurious living is is a sort of valid as well because you um i would be really interested if you could um, provide us apartments that are 14 square meters and actually function or 20 square meters mm -hmm. but 30 is really luxurious already or and i think you can totally manage that i think you can propose uh, this kind of uh, living that has uh, I mean, the modules could be even more integrated to each other, uh, meaning that they don't have to be slices, but uh, some kind of um, have certain joinery that um, that has as also apartment uh, um, layout or, or a multi-story layout for um, for a really thin apartment. So I, I just think that the the problem you're trying to solve is real, and mm -hmm. but it, it needs some more drastic solutions in order to this to be solved, and really providing a, a micro micro mm -hmm. <laughs> apartments. And that uh, and then when when the London municipality says like no, m the minimum is 38, then you say like okay, I do two 19 ones, but they're sort of inserted into they have the same address, you know, that like the yeah. apartment number two is uh, is actually having two apartments inside, and there's mm -hmm. two A and two B, and and sort of um, finding really, uh, yeah, interesting tricky solutions uh, to tackle the problem that is um, that is actually actually there that to find really small but still architecturally and spatially. Uh, quality uh, in high quality spaces. Mm -hmm. So I think it's. Uh, I, I think you can even squeeze it even more and then make yeah. it uh, 19. It would be interesting yeah, to would, see. I think I would uh, do it. I would like squ squeeze it a bit like this, and then perhaps even uh, I played a bit with the levels, but even add some more levels so that uh, it separates the ro rooms a bit. So the apartment is higher, and uh, it has more like uh, levels. So it could work, yes. It's, it's something to mm. do more again. <laughs> Just a quick comment uh, on this. Uh, maybe we should also discuss about maximum space for uh, apartments. <laughs> uh, I don't know how big uh, Schumacher's apartment is, but I know, for example, from... from uh, <laughs> 260 uh, from Sir Norman Foster. I know that it's uh, he has a table for 120 guests. So in London, yeah. central London, uh, I think this uh, apartment could house uh, probably 50, 60 people. But they're not flying <laughs> with the EasyJet either. No, they are not flying with the EasyJet yeah. either. <laughs> so uh, where shall we? <laughs> Um, it's de definitely this uh, 3D structure is uh, a little bit controversial because uh, it's very mm, nice height and uh, this reminds the old uh, facilities but uh, the use of it is just uh, plain and on the ground level and two di dimensional. Of course, uh, the people who are living there, it's uh, 16 to 30 something, and they are quite young people, and I suggest that there might be some ideas how to use this 3D structure for climbing it up and, and uh, making some activities there. Maybe you should, if you, you left it there to, I don't know, to reduce the main 
maintenance costs and everything, you should add there some kind of extra function, I don't know, ramps, uh, uh, climbing walls, uh, some, I don't know, bungee jumping, viewpoints, the roof terrace or at least the platform, not the roof maybe, it to be the lot more light. And that's, that's why, because it's uh, just the, the boundary of the memorial for a two-dimensional um, park is too, too expensive. And if you are talking about this low, um, low budget or uh, affordable uh, flats, it a little, little bit controversial. <laughs> well, like low. Mm. Well, uh, this could be done, uh, like as the next. As I said, could, you could uh, involve the uh, organizations and people around it, so you could develop it further. Add to add, if they are really missing this, uh, and they feel like they need these uh, activities. Uh, the process of planning it together could uh, we could add them to there. It's a space that can host it. It's uh, not uh, saying that it can't, but it it can be developed further in the future to host these uh, different uh, functions as well. Okay. Next question. Uh, the, the last question is uh -huh. uh, the short one. Is um, the, did, did you calculate that this is the sun, uh, sun path or uh, this? Um, insulation uh, in different flats because you are have almost not every everywhere but you have flats even uh, towards north side not not exactly to the north except the small uh, small uh, round plan there do you, did you calculate that it, there is uh, some uh, natural light uh, sunlight inside the flats or it's not important in london in the project i didn't uh do it as a separate uh, analysis, no. But uh, if uh, if I uh, would do it now, then there is also there is always the opportunity to uh, shift these uh, uh, together areas to the north, and then the apartments could uh, be around it, so that they could face more uh, north, uh, west, and northeast. Uh, the best, no, actually the best views are uh, towards here. The, all the cityscape is uh, visible from here. Ah, mm -hmm. the river. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. It depends what the best view is, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, I had a comment about uh, the open structures as well, but I, I was thinking about security issues uh, rather than making a multifunctional because of the uh, because of the customers uh, of the area, you say that they they enjoy life. Uh, you know, they have short-term uh, uh, relationships with London and so on. So maybe they will want to climb those, and then, then things will happen. But I, uh, this is, of course, uh, individual. And uh, but as an architect, maybe you should just think of uh, how those uh, things can uh, be misused uh, at some points. But my question is that um, you said that the, the problem that you're tackling is, uh, is overcrowding. So uh, at the moment in London, there are too many people living in one flat or uh, apartment. Do you know what is the um, square meters per person when you say that this is an overcrowding or, or not? Uh, it is, uh, uh, the statistics said that it's calculated on the basis of the the apartment, um, I think it was the apartment usage, like if it's a two bedroom one, like how many late, late uh, mm -hmm. are living there? It, it was given as a statistic, I didn't uh, myself calculate it. So that my question was motivated that whether in London or in, uh, in Tallinn, for example, this overcrowding is uh, seen as the same thing or, uh, or not? I think in the context, anyway, overcrowding, I think it's very, it could be very dangerous if something were to happen to the building or like fire-wise or anything uh, unusual. So the overcrowding is in itself a big issue. But uh, in... Uh, I'm thinking in another direction. I, I will give you some clues where I'm going with it. Uh, now you are taking people out of their 
uh, homes where they are overcrowded and putting them in those uh, 30 square meter uh, rooms. Uh, so does this improve their living conditions or not? Yeah, it's improved, yeah. So, so uh, this means that this overcrowding should mean that they have less than 30 square meters per person in those areas where they're living at the moment. Uh, yeah, so they definitely have less than 30, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the presentation. Mm. I had some topics that I wanted to talk about. One was the, um, uh, the space or genius loki as the, as the meaning of the space or the place. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I found uh, when you uh, showed us the picture of the area, that it was quite controversial. There were quite historical uh, urban uh, living areas and the and the industrial site just after, mm -hmm. and that's why I I kind of found it's it's really important to have uh, something what is in between that it differs from the both somehow. Just uh, the the over overcome would be more. Uh, uh, somehow fluent <laughs> or not that fluent mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, the question is like um, you are uh, viewing this uh, genius Loki from one aspect that it had the, had the structures before it has the, had the meaning before and now you're using it I was wondering if uh, if uh, it could be ongoing process somehow, like the people who are living there could give uh, could add a value to to the place. It is designed like well, they have the space, they have the common space, they have the structures to do whatever. But how is it possible? Or how do you feel that it? it could it be possible to add some inventions of the locals to their to their space? <laughs> to the interior or probably not interior, probably exterior. <laughs> yeah, I I mean the the area, the flood area. It's it's quite uh, uh, it's quite big, and there's a lot of uh, open space now for to to have this. Uh, have the say of the locals. If they mm -hmm. want uh, an, um, a playground, there is room for a playground. If they want some... Um, I don't um, know. Flower beds. Making flower beds, flower yeah, beds of course. Or uh, something like you this. could uh, even implement them on the... Mm -hmm. You could make a rooftop garden for it, for the flower beds, of course. Uh, I think uh, it, it is evolving with uh, the inhabitants inside. There is always room for for growth, in my opinion. So it's not designed like 100% like uh, in the rock, it is as it is, but it, it is an evolving process, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, then, and the other one, actually, maybe it's already covered with the space, uh, with the area <laughs> for living, but as I, as I see the, the people who want to build in Tallinn, they, Monthly, somebody is coming up with an idea. So let's make a micro flats and uh, let's ask 5,000 euros per square meters. Mm -hmm. And and it's uh, for me, it's already as it as it it's so much massive the will to make them. It I feel it is creating the problem in Tallinn for the mental health of people already because they can only afford this 15 square meters. So I'm actually glad that you're saying in your project that, uh, that uh, on contrary, they have these common spaces, not, not only the tiny flat. Mm -hmm. In Estonia, this, this aspect get, gets lost quite easily in the, in the process. Yeah, I think that, that, that was in the project the most like, central part of the micro-living, the, the social areas, and also when I read about it, 
it all said that uh, they need these um, mm. social areas and they have to be kind of different as well. Some social areas a bit smaller and some a bit bigger, more open. So there's a lot of variety inside. You don't, you're not constrained to your own apartment. You can uh, live on the floor, not live on the floor, but uh, the, your living room is in the city and on the floor as well. Mm. Thank you. Oh. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I guess the the, w the first reaction for me was also like, uh, ah, it's a luxury project uh, because uh, uh, I, I, everybody has seen those like memes or like those images of like people actually posting like uh, maybe like this small uh, apartment and being super happy and paying like over a thousand pounds for it. <laughs> so I guess like to solve those issues, of course, this is like a, would be like a livable area and it would be nice to have more like this stuff. But in London, I think uh, maybe you could have tackled more of the general problems and maybe how how how, how you could get. Uh, but uh, at at this point, yeah, you have to agree with Patrick that you need like a Patrick Schumacher that you need a smaller uh, apartments. And then in your project, you could have different options. You could like split it in two or or like make it like a smaller like this or whatever. So maybe if you had like areas like this, or maybe it's not a perfect circle. At some point, it becomes squeezed and then would have been also architecture and more interesting than it would be more convincing and stuff like this. But in general, it looks uh, it looks nice and uh, professionally done. And uh, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, I think if, uh, if the project would like only focus on micro livings, the variety would perhaps be a bit more uh, like um, different kinds. But I wanted to also pay attention to the area as well, so it's not only the unit inside, but also the surrounding. Uh, that's why the scope is a bit bigger. Sorry to interfere in the good discussion, but we are running out of time, and mm -hmm. we have to give now the word to the supervisor. Um, yeah, m maybe the most interesting thing, one of the most interesting things in the process is that it was much less linear than you see it now in the in the whole presentation. I think that if I get it correctly, at least the typology interest was like the main thing, that the red, the red line that let's see what micro living is, mm -hmm. and everything else was going back and forth until it would make sense, including like place and theory and so on. That was one thing. The other, like, that I haven't actually shared with you, like, <laughs> like Kimo was saying two days ago about the signature of the supervisor. Uh, this is incredibly dependently done, but uh, coincidentally, I think that, like, if I, if I would have done this, it would look like 80% like this. <laughs> so, 18. 80. 80. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I, I, I hope this wasn't like in the process too much like an echo chamber. Like oh, you no. didn't feel like it was always yeah 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 let's do it like this. I uh, know. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But you never said that. do it like this. Yeah. <laughs> and the the last thing has not to do with the process, but I, I'm also super super interested in like um, alternative housing typologies and uh, I'm always like very afraid of the implications. Uh, what you what you were saying what you were all saying actually like okay we are thinking about something especially thinking out of the box even more out of the box than this like the Patrick's what was it 15 square meters uh, 18. 18 and I'm always afraid you know like is this a breakthrough or or is it a commodifiable tool so are you making the, the 15 square meters cheaper or are you making the 30 square meters more expensive if you say that the 15 are fine already then the 30 is like for <laughs> texas uh, super millionaires and like okay yeah i don't have a solution to that but this is something like whenever i hear like okay this is the next step of how this could be different i'm like ah oh, but maybe it's like different in a bad way yeah i have my own yeah, I can. Mm, yeah, thank you uh, here for the comments and uh, a really nice discussion. I got some knowledge as well. I'm going to Google some. <laughs> very good. Very good. Uh, thank you, Yanis, for. I had, despite it being very difficult, I had a blast. <laughs> it was fun, and uh, all the teachers in the academy. I think over five years. That's where 
that's why we're here all. Thank you. And um, friends and family, <laughs> I owe it to you all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mia. Mm -hmm. This was the last uh, master thesis, and it's been intensive two and a half days uh, with 20 presentations altogether. Now it's time to close this part of the defense, and uh, it's time for a lunch break. Uh, again, we have a lunch uh, downstairs for the committee. For the students who have been presenting today and yesterday and on Monday, I have a couple of requests. Um, I do hope that all the material that you have presented as your master thesis, it should be here in this room available for the committee on the tables uh, close to that corner where they will be working, so that if the committee wants to check something, the work should be easily found and easily read and uh, uh, check it. And then another uh, wish on my side is that uh, the students would leave this room and we will leave this space entirely for the committee. So <laughs> no one else here. This is uh, just for I committee now. Uh, yeah, please. please, please. <laughs> we, we will have our technical means of uh, listening to your conversation. But, but this is now reserved for the defense committee from uh, half past two until half past four. Half past four, we will be back live again uh, on stream with, with the session that will conclude the defense. And we will also announce the winner of the Irina Raut Award that the defense committee will um, decide during this two hour session. And that's it uh, for now. Uh, thank you for joining also the online audience and uh, we'll meet here again after two and a half hours. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the committee is, is ready, and the committee, defense committee, is here represented by the chairperson Fabian Temski, Professor Fabian Temski, and uh, then uh, Mia Nuller will be here to congratulate uh, new architects. And um, unlike in previous years, the grades will not be announced publicly because of the regulation changing. We will hand over a paper that includes your grade and uh, it will be a private uh, information for you then to, to announce it or not to announce it to, to others. And uh, uh, Professor Demski will now hand over these um, uh, grades to, to all the students. I assume that um, all the students will graduate. So we will go through the students in the same order than the presentations were given. And you will receive from here the grade, handshake times three, and glass of wine, with which we will toast in the end. And after the grades are uh, given, not announced, but given to you, uh, Professor Demski will announce the winner of the Irina Raut Award, which is the award for the best uh, most interesting master thesis and also a significant sum of money for one thesis project. And even I don't know the winner, so it will be interesting to hear uh, your decision. Um, uh, unfortunately, I will need to leave quite soon after this ceremony, but uh, program director uh, Uller Ambos will take over chairing the event after that, but it will be informal, don't worry. When you have the classes and when we announce the results, then it will be less formal and the, also the um, online stream will be, will be closing then. And uh, would you like to say something before we start handing over the results? Yeah, uh, I just uh, will kind of uh, thank you from uh, part of the committee. Uh, what I uh, kind of learned also in our discussions is that we learned a lot from you in, during these uh, two and a half days, so this was really exciting. Thanks for the great presentations. It was uh, not easy to kind of, uh, uh, not always e easy to find uh, a, a common kind of opinion on the different projects. Uh, quite good discussions now. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think we can start with the ceremony yeah. then. Let or me first uh, thank you and, and all the committee members. It's been a lot of work to go through 20 excellent projects and uh, we really appreciate that you find the time to, to work on us, uh, our projects and our, our defense. So thank you and the whole committee. I don't know if there's anyone else left here, but... Uh, and then I would also like to thank uh, Trinulis and Gert for organizing everything, Sander for excellent streaming of the whole event. I think it has been extremely high quality that you've been seeing uh, real time on YouTube channel all the time. So. Thank you so much for making this happen, and uh, now it's time to give the mic back to Professor Demski and the results. Thank you, Kimo. Uh, Professor Lindenkangas, uh, sorry for being so informal in this uh, very important situation. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's start uh, with, uh, well, we start in the same order like the presentations were, so it's quite easy. Uh, there is no, there is no uh, other logic behind it. Uh, Marco Soro, uh, I don't know if I'm speaking it out right. He is not here, so I will leave uh, his letter here. Lucy Khan. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> And you have to get a drink, I guess. That's also part of the rules. <laughs> ah, yeah, that would be nice. Cool. So you can intervene with this other microphone. Uh, then uh, Pirit Bender. <laughs> Pirit. Emily uh, Zawatsky. And uh, the drink. <laughs> Vincent Markert. Uh, 
congratulations. Annette Pork. Congratulations. Daniela La, if she's here. Is she here? No? no. Oh, we leave it here. Erwin Golliff. Ah, yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> Lauren Ilves. Congratulations. Martin Daubaris, not here today. Denis Mirkulov, he's here. No. Violetta Jorkina. Congratulations. Please excuse me if I'm misspelling some names. Um, Rasmut, Rasmus Sonwald. It's not here. Thank you. Peter Luke. Not here. Birgit Wieder. <laughs> Congratulations. Welcome. Angelina Shilova. Congratulations. Jelena Katzak. Congratulations. Greta Annette Oyave. Congratulations. Marta Wolczek. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, Mia Natka. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Don't forget your drink. <laughs> so now we come to the uh, to the Ina Irina Raut Prize, uh, which uh, was also not an easy task to do, uh, to decide uh, kind of on the different uh, qualities. So it was kind of also a topic we rather wanted to follow, which could be encouraged in the future, and what we uh, thought it would be quite important uh, from the point, viewpoint of architecture, but also from uh, social aspects. Um, we uh, make it a bit more kind of dramatic. <laughs> um, well, we we uh, I think we uh, came, or I'm sure we came to the conclusion that uh, Greta Annette Oyave, uh, with her project uh, supporting kind of the week and uh, and supporting a group which is uh, quite um, quite uh, brand marked, so how, so to say, and uh, supporting this uh, with a kind of an architectural project in spatial concept uh, was uh, very convincing. And uh, yeah, congratulations to your <laughs> prize. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> you can say something if you like to. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we're going to go to the next one. 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 We're going to Lihtsalt, ja, ma ei oskagi sõnades sa panna praegu, et suureid täht tõesti. Mm -hmm. Aga väga õnnelik. Aitäh! Thank you.
Thank you so much uh, for the Defence Committee and Professor Demski. Uh, and thank you, Uller. Now it's time to raise a toast for the new architects and new graduates. Congratulations for the great work and, and the success during the thesis defence. Congratulations and thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> ah, supervisor can. S well, please. You can comment if you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to toast the beast. Green also and <laughs> yes. Francesco, please. <laughs> So we should also toast to those who are uh, following, also the, the candidates who are following online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Cheers. 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 And, and well done. Everybody. Well done, everybody, yeah. Okay. So. Show is done. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. Just turn it off.